Here's a list of things more likely to happen than Sheffield United beating Arsenal tonight. VAR will meet with universal approval. Burnley will start winning at home again. The Championship will get boring and Simon Jordan will become monosyllabic. Game night tonight, live and exclusive on TalkSport, can surely only go one way. It's Sheffield United against Arsenal with former England midfielder Danny Murphy alongside Sam Matterface. Well, having sat back and had their feet up watching Liverpool benefit from late drama at the City ground and Manchester City come from behind to post three points in the Manchester derby, Arsenal closed the Premier League weekend with what many believe should be a routine victory, as Adrian has been saying. Sheffield United fans might disagree, but if Mikel Arteta is right, then three points here, non-negotiable. He says if Arsenal are to win this title, then they must get 90 points, which means they have to win 11 of their final 12 games. And with City, Chelsea, Villa, Brighton, Spurs and Manchester United to come, this can't be the one that they fail to win. The blunt blades have failed to win for most of the season. Even Opta can't give you a positive statistic. According to the Stats Giants, Chris Wilder's team have a 0.4% chance of beating the drop. So if Arsenal's title charge looks like mission improbable, then Sheffield United's is mission impossible. Here are the teams, starting with Sheffield United, they're going to have Gerbic in goal. We think of back four, Bogle, Amahodzic, Robinson, Trusty, Davis, Norwood and Souza in midfield, McAtee and Harmer behind McBurney in attack. Arsenal, a little bit more simple to work out tonight. It is as you were for the Newcastle game. Raya is the goalkeeper. It is White, Saliba, Gabriel and Kibior. As the back four, Jorginho and Erdegaard and Rice in midfield with Saka, Havertz and Martinelli in attack. Well, the uh, PA announcer here, I don't know if you heard it, he actually said this when they came out to warm up as well. He called Sheffield United the red and white wizards. They need to pull something out of a hat there to... Uh, Get all three maybe points here, maybe that's what he was alluding to, yeah. Tomorrow night, TalkSport 2 takes you to Ellen's Road. Wednesday night, the Eddie had two live games from the Europa League on Thursday. Before Sheffield Wednesday welcome Leeds on Friday. Saturday, three live commentaries from the Premier League and the Championship. And Sunday, we have a dynamic duo of live matches. That's just the next seven days. We've got 12 commentaries during that period. But Monday night's a game night, and game night isn't game night. The greasy chip butty. Despite the disappointments, the Sheffield United fans are still in fine voice. Danny Murphy is here. Arsenal should win this comfortably. Tell me how Sheffield United prevent that from happening. Well, they need every one of their 11 having a game of their lives, or game of the season even, where they're all at it, fully concentrated and played to the... They all need to be a nine. And Arsenal have a bad day. It's as simple as that when you play in a... When there's so big a gap between the two teams, they're setting up with a back four, as you suggested earlier, Sam, looks that way. 4-5-1 or a 4-3-3 whichever way you want to look at it I would imagine it'll be a a low block for long periods but they have got players in this team who could cause all sorts of problems if they can get get the ball to them yep. Bogle is at right back as suggested Akma Hodzic, Robinson and Trusty yeah. are the back four tonight they have the ball they've got it to halfway. Arsenal in a luminous yellow with uh, odd swirling blue Stri are they striped? No, just lines just swirling around the shirt in different directions. Dark shorts and a luminous yellow socks attacking the goal away to our right. The cop, the Bramall Lane end away to our left is half populated by Arsenal supporters, the top tier with Sheffield United fans, and that's the route to goal that Sheffield United are pursuing in the first half with red and white striped shirts on and black shorts. And it's Arsenal come forward with Saka in behind on the right-hand side, playing by Jorginho, up to Declan Rice, who's inside the box, comes back to Saka, hits the crossbar, comes back to Martinez, keyed off the line by the goalkeeper, Gervic, and out of the penalty area, and somehow they survive, considering a goal inside the first minute and 20 seconds. Well, that's absolutely ridiculous defending. 
Well, they hit the crossbar and Gerbic had to make a save with his left leg on the goal line in order to prevent Arsenal from taking the lead. And that's despite the fact they've gone for a more defensive set-up today, Sheffield United. The uh, game has been stopped by Sam Barrett, the referee tonight, for a head injury of Martin Erdegaard. Six yards back from the edge of the penalty area, but Saka getting in down that right-hand side after Trusty was well beaten by an easy little give-and-go between Saka and uh, Jorginho. Joe, you know Sam, I've got to say, Trusty, I mean, I go as far as to say the under-14s my boys play in and I help coach sometimes. If the full-back did that... I'd be bringing him off. It's the most basic part of defending. It's a dead easy give and go, not even done with that much intensity, and he's in. Then then he ends up hitting the bar, comes out to a deck, I think, no, it's Martinelli who improvises, cleared off the line from Robinson. And then I think Rice gets a shot off as well. I mean, how can you defend so basic? I mean, forget Championship Premier League, that's, that's a professional, fo- professional footballer. It's just basics. Caught watching the ball, and you're up against one of the best wingers in the Premier League, and you take your eyes off, and he's in behind you. Awful. And Arsenal, Awful. who have made fast starts this season, have had the first real opportunity on goal. Their last two victories have been goal laden, 6 0 and 5 0. No team in English league history has won three successive away games by five or more. And it's defending they're doing now with Bogle into the box, sending across in towards the near post. And McAtee was going towards it, so was Tom Davis, wearing 22. His hair shaved to the bone now, used to those big, long, flowing, long locks. But Arsenal managed to clear and work it up midfield towards Jorginho. Jorginho wide out towards the left-hand side, collected by Declan Rice. Rice into the centre, and then back out to Ben White. And White now through the centre circle, and he finds uh, Saliba over halfway. And Arsenal in those luminous jerseys, pretty visible for everyone to see. It's quite frightening, really, how easily... Saka escaped the attention of the back line. Here on the far side, Martinelli has the ball for Arsenal. Nil-nil the score, but only the woodwork and Jack Robinson getting back and scooping off the line after... I thought initially, actually, Gerbic had got the touch, but it was Robinson who cleared off the line. It wasn't a bad attack from Sheffield United just then, either down that right-hand side with Bogle and McAtee. There's just not enough numbers in the box when he crossed it. Saka trying to get down the right side, but goes infield to Erdegaard, who spins away from the defender, falls kindly... And thrashed across the box by White, doesn't reach Kai Havertz. It was a real opportunity to poke that home. A poacher might have done so. That's another big chance for Arsenal. And we've only played four minutes here. Down the right side again, Sam. Trusty sitting off Saka, doing what he wants. Trusty doesn't usually play in that left fullback position, being asked to tonight. Rice through the centre, into Erdegaard, there's the goal. It was coming. Rice to Erdegaard, a cut back from the byline, pulled it through the six-yard box, Erdegaard arrived, and the captain pummeled it into the net from six yards out. Basic, easy, far too simple, and Sheffield United, who have looked like they were going to concede from the moment we've kicked off, have done so. Hasn't even taken five minutes, it's 1-0 Arsenal. It's just so easy, it's... I don't know whether it's a team lacking confidence and quality or both in the same measure, but it's a great pullback from Declan Rice. He he gets himself forward, which he likes to do when Jorginho's playing. Pulls it back with his left foot. It's an open... I don't know who's tracking Odegaard. He's got all the time in the world from the penalty spot, just in front of the penalty spot, left foot, side side foot, bottom corner. But it all started that attack again from the right-hand side. Trusty's five, ten foot off Saka, who takes his time, picks his pass... It's an awful start from Sheffield United. It's an abysmal start from Sheffield United it's because they've had sure. three massive chances already in the game and they've scored a goal. It's embarrassing. It's actually embarrassing. Here's uh, Rice bundling through the centre, trying to take on all comers. He does take on Tom Davis, who eventually throws himself in front of Declan Rice to stop the man who's got yet another assist. Already his best season for assists and will be for goals if he gets another. Havertz trying to get them further on the uh, front foot here. Travels down the left-hand side after a quick free kick. Gerbic didn't quite read it right. and Havertz got there first but was forced wide. He's got it back again, left-hand side, moving towards the edge of the box. Arsenal in firm control of the game. 1-0 they lead after just five minutes of the game on game night on TalkSport. It's back on the left with Martinelli. And now the problem is, is that Sheffield United, who came here to defend and keep Arsenal at bay, have been pierced inside the first few minutes of the game and their game plan has gone out of the window, Danny. And gone out the window because of basics. It's not even complicated stuff. Who's tracking runners? 
who's tracking Rice? Who's picking up Odegaard when that ball goes that wide, when Rice pull, puts it back? Surely you've been working on that. You know Odegaard comes in the box late. You know that Martinelli and Saka will kill you if you give them time. Get tight. Compete. Early in the game, get after them. Let them know you're there. Take a yellow, smash them, do whatever you got to do. Do something different than getting hammered every time you play at home by a team who are better. It's like they're watching and admiring from distance. Frustrating start for Sheffield United supporters who came here maybe hoping that there might be a little bit of uh, something different tonight from their team. Here is Saka on the right-hand side again, taking the ball down the right touchline, trying to take on trust. He's a former Arsenal player, by the way. Didn't make any senior appearances for them before he was sold in the summer to Sheffield United. He had a couple of loan spells out at uh, Birmingham City. He was the Birmingham Supporters Player of the Year last season... Oh, listen, listen he's, he's obviously not a left-back. You can see that from the first five minutes. But then why is the manager playing him there? Ridiculous decision. Corner. He's, he, he's so far off, Saka. Saka just walked past him on his right foot there. Somehow he recovered, but he's terrified of him. You can see it in his body level. Same going on here with Arsenal, because they've got a corner and they've got three players at the back edge of the 18-yard box, right at the far yeah. side of the box, with three players making a movement. There's something going on here. They've sent it short into Saka. Saka then tries to give it back to Erdegaard, gets it onto his left foot, does that, and they all start to come into the centre now, Erdegaard just checks and then tries to get some space to get a shot in towards the left corner of the goal, but it's well wide and goes behind, God knows what they were trying, it didn't quite work out for Arsenal It looked by doing that, I mean Sheffield United were man to man, so they took three out the main area, like to free up space yeah. for whoever else was left in the middle, and also it just gives Sheffield United something, because we haven't seen Arsenal do that It plays with their mind yeah, a little and bit I, yeah. And I like to see variation because most good club, well, good coaches now, of course, will have the other team's set plays. You'll do a bit of work on them the day before, two days before. And when they throw in something different, it can create that little bit of, oh, my God, who's doing, where, where are they going? That's not what we saw on the video. Nicholas Jovert is the Arsenal set-piece coach, and he's been uh, widely credited with the uh, success of their set-pieces this season. 19 goals from set-pieces this campaign, 13 from corners already. Arsenal... And they're already in front here, a goal from open play created by Declan Rice, finished off by Erdegaard. Trusty heads the ball out on this near touchline. It has been a season to forget for the Blades. Only four teams in Premier League history have had fewer points at this stage of the Premier League season. They leak like a rusty pipe. They're on course to concede over 95 goals at this current rate, which would mean they would take Derby's unwanted record of 89 goals in the Premier League season set 16 years ago. Arsenal on the attack again, down the right, with Ben White, trying to throw it into the path of Havertz. It's helped onto him by Robertson. The ball almost goes out of play. It's hooked by Vinny Souza out towards this near side, and then Trusty puts it out and away for a throw-in to Arsenal, right side, deep inside Sheffield United territory. There is another half of the field. It's just not being used at this moment in time. <laughs> Ben White hands it forward into Saka. White tries to go on the outside. It's kicked and cleared away by Souza. It's met on the halfway line or just back from that by David Raya. And he gives it to Gabriel, who plays it forward for Arsenal. Come forward again with William Saliba. Well, we played 10 minutes of the game here. Arsenal lead by a goal to nil. And they could have had three already. The woodwork has been rattled too. Great ball. It's a great ball by Odegaard. Out towards the left-hand side. Martinelli is free. Got some space. Saka's free inside the area. Left footed drive towards the near post. And it's blocked by the diving Robinson who gets in front of him. Then they kick it clear aimlessly upfield. And it's an easy retrieve from Gabriel back to his goalkeeper. But there was far too much space again for Martinelli well, in the wide areas. It was because Bogle had to come and pick Rice up because someone had let him run from midfield maybe Norwood and Bogle had to come in and did his job but it left Mount Martinelli free and then they have an overload you have to track runners from midfield you know I think it was Suzu who left Odegaard for the goal you've got Norwood on rice then you've got to track your runners you can't pass them on well, they've got so much time and space at this moment in time Arsenal uh, Havertz has it pokes it to uh, Kivior who uh, actually just put it straight out of play on the far side trying to give it to Martinelli didn't work for him goes out for a throw in the right fullback position Chris Wilder is not happy at all and has now detailed uh, Vinny Souza I think to keep an eye on Ben White because the fact that he was coming forward down the right hand side almost doubling uh, with uh, Saka has uh, caused trusty problems in the opening 11 minutes of this game 
which Arsenal lead by a goal to nil. Live on TalkSport with now. And don't forget that with now you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Sheffield United versus Arsenal. Live right now, contract free with a now membership. Search now sports. There's no belief in this Sheffield United team. There's no intensity on the press, obviously, because they're trying to drop off. But they look absolutely devoid of confidence. Well, Arsenal have scored two goals in each of their last seven halves of football. The statistics tell their own story, but watching Arsenal with your own eyes, you can see the confidence and swagger with which they are playing at this moment in time. And Sheffield United making it easier for them. As Havertz picks the ball up on the edge of the D, back to goal, tries to set it for Kivior, whose strike is repelled by the defence. It goes back to halfway. Raya will get it quickly, and Arsenal will have it once more and look to build from the back. Here is... William Saliba, those two, Gabriel and Saliba, have been the fulcrum of that defence, the best defence in the land. And they can, if they score a couple of more goals tonight, have the best attack in the land as well in the Premier League this season. Arsenal, Saka, well you wouldn't put it past them the way things have started. Saka on the outside, beats trust, oh he gets into God. the penalty area, pulls it back into the area, it comes off the defender, goes in, it's an own goal. It's pathetic, it's embarrassing. They are bottom, they are blunt and they are on course to be battered. That's the life of a blade right now. Maybe no surprise when you're defending like this. Sheffield United 2-0 down inside 13 minutes, and this is a hammering in the waiting. Well, I mean, I've got respect for Chris Wilder, but he must know his players. I mean, the lad at left-back, Rusty, sorry, Trusty, who looks rusty, he is nowhere near it. It's like uh, the best player in the school playing against the worst player who's four years younger. He's walking past him. He's, he's embarrassing him. It's, it's, it's really difficult for him if he's not a left-back. I get that. But why is the manager putting him in that position? Well, the ball went down the right-hand side of the bar line. He pulled it back, went through the le legs of the goalkeeper. It came off the inside of the right foot of Bogle and into the net. To be fair to Bogle and the goalie, I mean, it, it, not much they can do when the right wing is allowed to run freely past the player, go as close to goal as he wants and smash it across the goal. Well, there's already a bit of disorder away to our left-hand side and there's a few police going into the corner, the karma corner as it's called, away to our left just to block up the uh, segregation between Sheffield United and Arsenal supporters because Sheffield United's fans have started to leave away to our left-hand side. As Arsenal come forward again, inside the centre circle, down the uh, left in. side, Martinelli, he's got Rice through the centre, it's back to Martinelli, it's in, it's 3-0! Oh my word! What on earth is going on here? Sheffield United are collapsing! There's nothing steely about this Sheffield product! Gabriel Martinelli takes the applause. Less than 15 minutes have been played and the Blades are the one that have been cut open far too easily in this opening quarter of an hour. It's humiliating for the Sheffield United supporters. He's making a sub already. Are on the wrong end of yet another bashing up at home. It's 3-0. Martinelli with the latest goal. Rice might claim it because it looked to take a deflection as he ran in front of the goalkeeper at the end. But I think that's Martinelli's goal all day long. No one's tracking Kivior, no one's tracking Rice. So therefore Martinelli's got a free hit because they're all over the place. I, I, I feel for these supporters. Although we'll make the journey home after easier. They'll all be gone by half time and I don't blame them. If Arsenal keep the intensity up here, they could get 10. Well, Arsenal will keep the intensity up, Danny, because, because the they difference. know that goal difference could be crucial. I know that, but sometimes you know you've got big games coming, you do protect yourself a little bit, you, get, you just get a bit bored keeping I, the ball. I, I think after what happened last year, they will know that this is integral, that they take advantage of the maybe, situation. Maybe. If they're real winners, they've got to go out and win this game by as many as they can. They're making a substitute already, and... Uh, coming off Oliver Norwood who hasn't touched the ball yet is being replaced by well, Ben it's Osborne it's, beca it's because he kept letting Declan Rice run off the back of him well, and that's after 16 minutes I think Ben Os Osborne will go I think he'll play left back 
I think he'll play left wing back, Ben Osborne. I yeah. think they'll go to a back three and he'll play left wing back. Souza and Davis will play a little bit deeper in midfield, but Bernie will go up top on his own with Harmer and uh, McAtee charged with getting up alongside him. But I think they'll go to a three. They have, I think. To be honest, the manager's got to take some serious responsibility for playing Krusty at left back. I mean, duck out of water is, is being kind. He shouldn't be that uncomfortable, though, though if he's a centre half. Positional sense, no good. No athleticism, no intensity. No, he's not the only one, by the way. The people who are running off the midfielders, I mean, just basics. You run, you track your runner. Well, look, we knew that the formation was going to be a surprise because of the way that they'd picked the team, but also he's in. the analysts telling us that Havertz is inside the penalty area. He's brought the ball down oh, out of the sky. Shot. And instead of controlling it, he should have had an effort. He didn't. And it goes into the arms of Gerbich eventually. We knew this formation was going to be a surprise. We knew there was something that they were cooking up. But whatever they, they were cooking up, they've got the wrong recipe. Well, it's, to be honest, it wasn't complicated. A 4-3-3 becomes a 4-5-1 when you're defending. But any, any formation you play, if you're playing midfield, you have to track your runners. Otherwise, the defenders are going to get overload. Your full-backs have to go up against the wingers and be competitive. And none of that was happening. It's as bad as before. I, I, I can't recall. A, I mean, they've had some bad starts to games. Sheffield well, United, but the eight 0 against Newcastle is going to be tested. Well, they were, they were, they were. I mean, it's fifth. What was it? Fourteen minutes that third goal. Yeah. They were three 0 down to Villa. What was that? Twenty minutes. Can't remember, but it was. It was equally. This is equally bad, if not worse. Well, they were. They played Bar Brighton recently. Lost five 0 here. And they were 2 0 down in 24 minutes. They lost 5 0 to Sheffield United, uh, yes. to uh, Aston Villa here, and they were 4 0 down in half an hour, you'll remember. Well, it's equally as bad. And it is equally as bad as that. When they played Newcastle earlier in the season and lost 8 0, and they conceded their third goal after 35 minutes. So it took a long time for Newcastle to rack up their goals, really, in relative sense and if we're doing a minutes per goal record then Arsenal at the moment are ahead of all of those and therefore could be racking up a huge scoreline here Arsenal lead by three goals to nil we haven't reached 20 minutes yet and it's been as bad as you would imagine that that scoreline would suggest it is well I'm Mc amazed Mc the Burning. amount of fans are still in the stadium uh, on to McAtee, skips past one challenge and tries to get to the edge of the Arsenal penalty area. He shoots, and it's well wide of goal, but it is ironically cheered by the Arsenal fans behind the goal away to our left. A couple of Sheffield United fans, hardy souls, get up and start to try and uh, applaud and try and encourage their team, but they know it's a forlorn task. Bramall Lane isn't bare tonight. There are empty seats in its ageing stands. We're high up in the uh, Tony Curry stand. Right of the halfway line, the cop that has been treated to a couple of riotous seasons recently has lost a little bit of his power because of the uh, beatings that have been handed out here. And uh, a few have already left tonight after what has been a rather disappointing first 15 minutes, and that's an understatement. It's been horrendous. Embarrassing, horrendous, woeful. Uh, they've given up. Well, they've gone to a back five, and uh, now it looks as if Saka's being man-marked by Vinny Souza when Arsenal have got the ball. And B B Ben White's come out towards this right-hand side. Now Arsenal have got to change their tactics. If they, they're not going to waste too much en energy, though, Arsenal, are they? Because no. ultimately they know there's no point in getting them into a battle now with, with uh, Sheffield United. Yeah, if they can take advantage of it, they will. If they can't, they just have to, you know, fold their cards and say we'll go on with three points. We're I happy with Arteta that. I think Arteta will already be thinking about who he can rest late, you know, second half maybe. He might even make two or three changes at half time if they get one more. Uh, here's Erdegaard on to Rice. Rice with a rifled shot, parried away by Gerbich. And that was from the left edge of the area over on the far side. He smacked it right footed. It was palmed away. He started like a train, Rice. His runs off the ball into the box have been phenomenal. And that was another one. He took it with him and smashed it. Straight down the keeper's throat, really, but it was a good effort. It's that license he's got when Jorginho plays. Talked about it, you know, the Newcastle game, the Liverpool game at home, where he had that security as Jorginho. I mean, don't get me wrong, tonight Jorginho could probably bomb on as well and still not have a problem, but nobody picking him up. Arsenal now have the best defence and the best attack 
in the Premier League this season and a victory of this size will take them to within two points of top spot a point behind Manchester City having had a better goal difference than both and it wasn't like that at the turn of the year here is Gabriel motoring forward once again Arsenal on the hunt for more goals down the left they come with Martinelli who's already got one here today uh, Saka who's now got over 50 assists for the club after his goal was turned in by Bogle ball sent wide out towards the left hand side Martinelli in towards the penalty spot Saka coming round the back still loose inside the area he drops for Kai Havertz oh. who spins and didn't catch it should have scored and it goes into the ground and then up into the arms of the goalkeeper and they will easily clear but again once again it was Arsenal who were quickest to the ball inside the penalty area when it ran loose it was actually a good defensive header from Osborne got in there got inside but ended up falling to Havertz and didn't quite connect but it could have been easily been four it's just three at this moment in time and we play 22 and a half minutes live on talk sport tonight live football tomorrow wednesday thursday friday saturday and sunday seven games uh, 12 games in seven days here on talk sport very much looking forward to it lots of football as you would expect from the world's biggest sports radio station and i'm sure that ali mccoist and jeff stelling will have a lot to say about this tomorrow morning live on talk sport when you wake up 6 a.m they'll be back together again in the superstar breakfast I'm not sure why he only took Norwood off because just isolating him making him look the scapegoat should have been three of them off it's 3-0 23 minutes played free kick taken by McAtee in towards the near post away uh, by uh, Kivior out towards the near side the rain still trickles down from the sky it's been raining goals in the first few minutes here in Arsenal's favour clipped down the left by Osborne away by White picked up by Saka sent in field Souza helps it back to halfway and Sheffield United have possession but Rice is too strong he puts pressure on the back heel by Erdegaard actually runs to Tom Davis Rice comes across wants a bit more of the action Ben White has a little nibble at Davis and then the two of them have a few tidy words and a free kick is given on halfway to Sheffield United it's still Sheffield United nil Arsenal three. Oh, mistake by Vinny Souza. And it runs out of play over on the far side. Havertz wants to take the throw in quickly. Martinelli was alert to that. He's darted down the left. Wants to take on the defender. Tries to go past Ama Hodzic, who then outwits him, takes the ball away, and then clears it upfield towards Ollie McBurney, who's on the halfway line. Holds it up well. Turns it back. Keeps hold of the ball. That plays it into An Ama Hodzic, who's uh, actually under pressure, dispossessed. Martinelli's been rushed up to the floor, but it comes to Havertz, oh. who arrows it into the corner and past the goalkeeper. And it's 4 0. 4 0 after 24 minutes. An unbelievable start to the game by awesome Arsenal. This used to be a tough place to come. Not anymore. Four goals inside 25 minutes. It's unreal. We're asking for a foul, Sam, but when there when there was a turnover. Havertz with the goal. Martinelli went down the left after the ball was played back by McBurney into Ahmed Hodzic. He was being shackled. He lost the ball. He tried to drag Martinelli to the floor. The referee said play on. Looked all right to me. They did. And away with it went Havertz, steaming down the left side of the box, and he drove it into the far corner, and it's 4 0. No, it's not a foul. I don't know why Robinson's not going across to Havertz to try and block the ball. When he breaks, when he breaks here, Havertz, on the inside left position, you're thinking Robinson's going to go over to try and block, but he waits. And Havertz, with his technical ability, takes his time, picks his spot. It's, do you know what it feels like? It feels like sometimes when you play at training ground, first team, and you get like one of the younger teams over, the 18s or, you know, the younger boys, just to get some fitness or get your sharpness up, and they can't cope. Well, they're going down the left-hand side now, and there's a big chance here oh, for Harmer, nice. and he's tried to shoot towards offside. the far corner. And it's stopped by Ryan, but the offside flag would have stopped him anyway. And... Uh, eventually it's cleared away by the Arsenal defence but they just tried to spring an offside trap and didn't manage to do it there with Gustavo Harmer 
I have to say, for all Sheffield United's poor play, the intensity of Arsenal's play, the running off the ball, the quick passing, the speed of Thorpe, yeah, getting bang at it. This can't be a coincidence, can it? Beating Burnley six, you know, scoring well, goals against uh, West Ham and Newcastle for fun. As Saka comes down the right again, shovels the ball into the near post. It's away by the retreating Robinson. No, you can, you can not, say all you like about yeah. how bad these other teams have been, yeah, yeah. but Arsenal have got to have been in cracking form to be able to do this. It's a great point, Sam, and, and the, the movement we're seeing, the running off the ball, the speed of pass, the right decisions... That's what you get when everyone's sharp and bang on it. And Ben Arteta has to take credit for that. Refocusing them, re-energising them, that break where they had a bad December, didn't they? Let's be honest. People writing them off, including myself, I have to admit. They do, they do look really bang at it. There's a real zip about their play. And they go up to within one point of City, two points of Liverpool with a victory well, here won, today. Yeah. And they will win here today. <laughs> I'm going to stick my neck out and say that's going to happen. <laughs> uh, especially because defensively, in all those games that we've just mentioned, they've been relatively untroubled. In fact, rarely have their back line been called upon at all in 2024 in the Premier League. Their expected goals against is 1.9. Yeah, the really next best good. is Manchester City's, which is 8.3. That just tells you, and that's a lot of numbers. I'll tell you this. Arsenal barely have faced a shot on target of any real note in the opening few months of 2024. I like the shape. They don't, it's, a, it's a good old traditional back four. <laughs> don't really see them these days, do we? I love it. <laughs> Here is uh, Kibior down the left-hand side. It's actually four centre-halves, really, isn't it? Yeah, that at Arsenal the moment, play. yeah. Yeah, with Kibior at left-back and Ben White at right-back. And uh, something that Manchester City do. All of them, by the way, playing inside the Sheffield United half. In fact... Midway inside the Sheffield yeah. United half. It's unbelievable. Look, no, no one's getting near the ball for Sheffield United. Look how far off they are. They're all four or five yards off. There's no press. It, they can't That's get near the ball. Session. It's a keep ball session. They're popping it around for fun now. They're taking the mick a little bit here. One touch football, edge of the penalty area. They're chasing shadows. Someone's got a wire into a tackle, at least to stop them I in would. their tracks. And uh, Tom Davis eventually gets something on the ball, but it's very quickly back to Gabriel. Down the left, it goes to Erdegaard. There's and the there's the tackle. It was coming. Bogle's going to get a yellow card. The problem was is that they were going for it. They were pushing it around. They were taking the mick in the way that they were playing because they were so good and Sheffield United was so off it that it was going to happen. That's what happens. That that's what you do. And Bogle went wiring in, and he gets a yellow card. Do you know? Do you know what though? It's not. It's not. They're not actually taking the mick. They're moving the ball quickly. It's not like. Oh, it's not skills I, for not. You I, know. I totally agree with you. Yeah, it's actually good play. They're getting frustrated because <laughs> they're if, not close enough. But it to, is humiliating for Sheffield it is, United. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it's not Arsenal being arrogant. They're actually moving the ball really quickly. I like that. I mean, that would have been me. I can't have it. it, it you, some, you need six or seven of you to fly in and say right. We might, lose. Stop this. we might lose, but we'll, we'll have a go. You are going to lose. It's half an hour in, and it's 4-0 to Arsenal. I can't tell you how hard it is. I've played in games where you've been three down half-time, or United have given Zayden. Ever or... been 4-0 down after half an hour? Not that I recall. But I've had a couple of second-half collapses. But the hardest thing as a footballer, individually, is to keep yourself mated and find a reason in the game to stay on top of your job and keep motivated and keep sharp and doing that because generally you drop and start feeling sorry for yourself. Set piece for Arsenal, we know how good they are at these, and uh, Declan Rice's delivery this time actually as well, yeah. defended by uh, Bogle, it wasn't the best of curl balls into the box from Declan Rice, 4-0 the score after half an hour, it's going to be a big boon for Arsenal and Arteta as they go into the weekend, they've got Brentford on Saturday, and then uh, they'll sit out a week before the international break, so their break really will start after Saturday they'll have almost three weeks off I'll tell you what is interesting watching Declan play that freer role I know it, it, it's, it's much easier tonight now they've got the goals but with Jorginho behind him he's really he's, he looks like he's loving it enjoying getting forward and playing around the corners he's adapted to it well of course they've still got that Porto game to worry about after the Porto game they can go on their mid-season break and they will expect to claw back the deficit that they suffered in the Champions League bearing in mind how well they are playing at this moment in time uh, ball goes up to the halfway line, dragged to the floor was McBurney, so it's going to be a free kick on halfway, Penny for Chris Wilder's thoughts at this moment in time well I, I don't understand I can't believe for the life of me he hasn't talked to the players about tracking runners and getting tight to people I mean the, the Saka situation in the first five minutes was beyond comprehension really um, 
and the lack of ability to just track runners from midfield, which is normal stuff. It, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know whether to blame him or not. I don't know what he said before, but if you can't set a team up to do the basics in the first 20 minutes of a game, then you are struggling to get your message across. 4-0 to Arsenal. And we've played 32 minutes of the game. It's going to be a long hour for those Sheffield United fans that have stayed. And there's a lot more empty red seats in and around this ground than there were 10 minutes ago. I'm amazed how many are still here. Because this ain't a one-off. No, this is the third time in a row exactly. it's happened. And it could get worse. And if it doesn't get worse, I'd be amazed. Because if they do get one more goal, it'll be the first time in English league history that's happened to a team three times at home in a row. And it'll be the first time in league history that an attacking team has done it three times away from home in a row. Because Arsenal are on the, a good charge themselves. Here is Gabriel. It's relentless. It's ruthless. They are razor sharp at this moment in time, Arsenal. As they push the ball out towards the left-hand side. Onto Martinelli again. The blades are bewildered as the ball comes into the box. Away by Tom Davis, who swishes the ball out to the far side. Just sort of shanked it out of play. It goes to Martinelli, to Rice, and then back into Havertz. Pops it back to Gabriel. Everybody inside the Sheffield United half of the ball. The only thing Arsenal can, can fall, the, fall into now is that trap of just standing still a little bit more and just enjoying passing it about rather than that movement we've seen early in the game that creates the, the problems for Sheffield United when you've got people running off the ball and, and doing the hard yards. It, it is easy to fall into the trap of pass, 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 pass because you, you're so much in control. But as you said, there is a goal difference issue. There is. Not anymore at the moment there isn't, but they might be going in... At to the last few weeks of the season and they want to make sure that they've given themselves every chance these big wins and the lack of goals that they've conceded have transformed their goal difference over January here is uh, Gabriel back to Saliba who moves it forward and then plays it towards the left back to Saliba once again and then he tries to play the ball out and he does it so easily between two midfield players out to the far side and Kivior. It's flicked around oh. the corner for Martinelli who's in behind, gets to the byline, then scoops it back into the centre of the, the box. It's going to be Declan Rice who gets the loose ball first as it comes out of the area. Now Erdegaard, then back to Jorginho who looks up, sends it wide. Now Ben White on the corner of the area, right side for Arsenal as they come forward in numbers once again. Erdegaard flicks it into the area. It's going to be headed away this uh, by Arma Hodzic. It goes left collected by Kivior, wide to Martinelli, Sheffield United not even getting close to Arsenal players. Here. Nowhere near Sam, look how far off they are, they're nearly camped on the 18 yard box, they can't, they there's no intensity they, to the press, they, they already look knackered, Yeah. here is Erdegaard, they have been chasing shadows since we blew the whistle here, a little kick in the back of the ankles from uh, Vinny Souza you would have thought out of everyone, Vinny Souza and Jack Robinson will be up for the fight, bearing in mind that uh, a couple of weeks ago they were fighting amongst themselves. They haven't shown enough fight in this game so far. Mikel Arteta looks nonplussed as he stands inside the technical area. Well, it'd be nice for him to have a 90 minutes where he's not bouncing up and down because uh, he usually gets so integrated into the match with his emotion, he can actually take a breath and just admire his team play for a little bit without that concern or worry that you're going to give a goal away or... Here we go. Arsenal won the reverse game at the Emirates 5-0. Saka into the area, looking for Martinelli, who's run from left to right into the box on the right side. It's with Erdegaard now. Havertz to aim at in the centre. Erdegaard into Jorginho. Quick ball into Martinelli, who takes it on well, then turns. Left-footed shot, takes a deflection off. Arma Kozic goes out for a corner over on the far side. Great move. Martinelli drifting in from the left, ends up on the right, and he ends up in the middle. That's the running I'm talking about. That's the off-the-work, off-the-ball stuff where you're trying to create space for others and messing around the defenders, who's going to pick him up, who's passing him on. They're enjoying themselves, rightly so. Corner kick, far side to be taken by Declan Rice. <laughs> A few of the supporters have pointed out that the ball is not correctly in the quadrant. Well, that'll make all the difference. As if that's the, uh, the biggest problem they've got. It only has to overhang the quadrant, that is the law, over on the far side. Sam Barrett being rather efficient, just making sure that it definitely is doing just that. You stop kicking. I'm not kicking. I'm just, just, I know you're excited, but come on. Listen, I've just business. got a little bit of adrenaline <laughs> flowing through my veins here, watching this Arsenal cavalcade towards goal. Here is uh, 
Rice pinging it to the edge of the box. So much space for Erdegaard to bring it down on the edge of the area. Right footed strike. It's cleared away from the edge of the six yard box. But they've given it away again. Erdegaard into the centre. It's towards Havertz. Up in the air by Trusty, who just about got there. Havertz wins the second ball. Saka then on to Saliba. Then on to Erdegaard again. Wide to Ben White. Back into the centre. Stopped by Robinson. Tries to clip it away. Arsenal have that back. Thank you very much. They can't even get out of their final third, let alone their half at this moment in time. Sheffield United and Arsenal come forward again. Erdegaard forward to Saka. Saka in between two players, went down wanting a free kick. McAtee was the closest to him. The referee said no free kick and it's cleared away up over the halfway line by uh, Sheffield United. See, even Not... referees are starting to feel sorry for Sheffield United. That's what happens in games, you know. They just start feeling sorry for you when you're taking a hiding. Well, it's interesting that you should say that because I, I thought that at one stage they were going to bring in that mercy rule, weren't they, where you could blow the whistle without giving any injury time. They did that between Luton and Man City, didn't they, in the game in the FA Cup last, last week. I mean, he might as well just blow it now. Well, yeah, you can't do that, can you, because of Golden, like you said. The, the, I know you It joke. was a joke. I know. <laughs> never know with you. <laughs> Do you know what? On that, there's a there was loads of times when I played. And you get to 90 minutes, and there might be six or seven, been a few injuries, and you say to the ref, "Come on," and he'd blow up for you. But they can't do it now. White into Erdegaard. Erdegaard back to Saliba. Down the right, it goes into Saka. It's 4-0 for Arsenal with eight minutes before half time. He gets towards the byline, pokes it back to Erdegaard, opens his body, goes to shoot. Well blocked this time by Souza. Out as far as Gabriel, encouraged to shoot by the Arsenal fans. They haven't even shot towards the Arsenal fans yet. Imagine what it's going to be like when they're trying to suck the ball into the net in the second half. Erdegaard, again, I mean, Sheffield United look like... Honestly, they look like a team from a different realm. They do. They look like they've been out celebrating for a week. That they've just, you know, like, been on the Raz. The legs are slow, they're uh, thinking and, and, slow. And I don't think we're trying to be disrespectful no, no. here, are you? We, we are trying to convey what we're seeing. They, they, are, they are on the ropes. They are literally like a, like a heavyweight boxer in the final rounds of a slugfest. It looks like a League Two side playing a Premier League side at the moment. That, that's the reality. Here down oh. the right-hand side, Saka, lovely bit of skill, pulls it back through the area. Oh, it's beautiful. Rice, it's five. Declan Rice runs over to celebrate in the corner. Saka with another assist. It's a brilliant goal from Arsenal. Great feat from Saka, wasn't it? They are just goal machines right now. And as it stands, they are about to be the first team in English league history to win three successive away games by five or more goals. They look like record breakers. They're playing like record breakers by the end of the night. They could be record breakers. That was beautiful skill from Saka. It's actually brilliant quick feet. Nice and strong. Rice is in there again. He's enjoying that freedom tonight. Pulls it back. Let's it come onto his right foot. And just bends it across the goal into that bottom right hand corner. Deserves that for the start he's made, right? It's been sensational this first half. Well, they've all been good, but especially Declan. He's been flying forward, making things happen. Well, there's quite a few now that are leaving the ground in Sheffield United colours, all heading towards the exit, and I think their takeaway will be fried by rice. He's had a terrific game, and Arsenal have completely cooked them but they've been terrible haven't they Sheffield United have been absolutely off the place there's not many teams that are 5-0 down at half time even when they lost 8-0 they weren't 5-0 down at half time I, um, I'm loath to keep digging Sheffield United out because Arsenal have been so good but some of what I'm seeing is it's actually, it's actually really difficult to try and understand how poor they've been in this first half and why physically, mentally every aspect of what they've done has been atrocious they've just sent a long throw into the box their first foray into the Arsenal box in the entire match, it was well defended by Arsenal and it goes out for a throw in on this near side, what do you do if you're uh, Chris Wilder at half time, just make four changes yeah. the four changes you've got left, just go Well, no, right. I, I made three because someone could always get an injury and you don't want to play against ten 
Matt, I'd make three more, that's for sure. Let's hope it's not five, uh, six nil before half time. Arsenal now searching for their 10,000th goal of all time. Rice trying to twirl away from the attentions of Tom Davis. Jorginho. Saliba. 5 nil at half time. The one thing you do see is your characters at this point. See if he's got any. Erdegaard tricks tr his way into the box, then tries to lay oh. on to White, and before he could get there, Trusty kicked it out, and it's away for a corner on this near side. We've still got three and a half minutes to go before half time. Well, it, it feels like Arsenal, when they go up a gear and when they just move it quickly and get some runners, they can score when they want, really. It does feel that way. Crikey. I mean, if they want to add to their goal difference, tonight is the night to do it, isn't it? Erdegaard to take the corner kick from this near side. Saka. He's got Erdegaard in support if he needs him. He wants to try and take on Harmer on this near touchline. He twists one way, then the other. He's playing with him at this moment in time. Gives it back to Erdegaard. He's now toying with uh, Souza. Back to Saka. Finds, finds a little bit of room. Saka, I think, is a little bit disappointed as he balloons the ball into the cop. He hasn't yeah, scored a goal yet. He, try, he will be, but he's still been a threat. He tried to uh, whiz that in the top corner. Wants a pit, he wants a part of that. That's the only thing sometimes when you're so dominant. You start becoming a little bit self, not Saka, but any of the players start thinking, I've got goal, get goals, get assists here, yeah. rather than just keep that ball moving. Gabriel Jesus and Thomas Partey might think we might get on the pitch tonight. Oh, they will do. He will, he will definitely be resting some of his... Uh, well, that's a worry for Sheffield United as it is, isn't it? Because what if they bring on someone who's hungry to make an impression? Here down the right comes McAtee, trying to skip his way towards the edge of the box. It comes out to Bogle, his cross is blocked by Martinelli, it goes out of play over on the far side. I think this support have been ground down by performances that they've seen in recent weeks. One win in ten Premier League games, and most of them didn't even see it. It was away at Luton on a Saturday afternoon. They haven't won at home since the 9th of December, Sheffield United, when they beat Brentford by a goal to nil. They've lost 5-0 to Villa, 5-0 to... Uh, Brighton now they're losing 5-0 to Arsenal you see the thing is Sam there's 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 two things in football there's the quality aspect and then there's the physical now if there's a real lack of quality in this Sheffield United team and squad which it looks like there is then you have to try and make sure you're physically at the best you can be to try and be competitive at least for periods in game but both areas are well off they're lacking quality, but they're lacking physicality and tenacity, which is a no-no. It's not the Sheffield United we've seen under Chris Wilder in previous seasons when he's brought them up. It's Sheffield United nil, Arsenal 5, on talk sport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Enterprise has 450 branches with all the vehicles your business needs. Free kick against uh, McAtee for a challenge on Ben White. And Arsenal aren't finished yet with 30 seconds to go before half time it's the 21st time this season that Sheffield United have conceded first in the game they've gone on to concede four more after that I mean Oli McBurney might, not, might as well not be out there might as just bring on another defender if you want to stop the rock ball out on the far side with Martinelli Martinelli sending it back to halfway it's currently Sheffield United nil Arsenal five and Arsenal on the attack down the left-hand side. Martinez not going to keep that in. I can tell you the latest odds from Labrooks. Where right now you can back Sheffield United to score the next goal at six to one. Arsenal to score the next goal at nine to two. On no score eight to one. It's all to, thanks to Labrooks. 18 plus. Big gamble aware. You got a price for five five there. Uh, you just name your price. I will personally would give you? it to you. Yeah, whatever you want. <laughs> um, oh, that would be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> Well, you've got five minutes before half-time now because there have been five minutes added, which was roundly booed by everyone inside the stadium. And, and it's 5-0 at this moment in time. Yeah, place your bets now, Danny, if you want to uh, get in on the act. No, no one, I mean, no one's that crazy. <laughs> I remember years ago, was it Newcastle Arsenal, the 4-4, when it was... Yeah. 4 0 up. But yeah, the late Czech Tiote scored yeah, the, uh, the yeah, equalising yeah, goal. Yeah, amazing goal. It was a brilliant goal. Well, I think uh, at this moment in time... I'm not sure anyone's ever come back from five. 
No, not in the Premier League, they haven't. Not at half time, anyway. Well, they haven't, because the highest scoring game ever is uh, 7 4, Portsmouth against Reading, and uh, you'd need to score six yeah. to uh, win this game. Here is uh, Saliba. Back to. Uh, There's not a desire Gabriel. for them to try and score a goal. No. They're, they're just so on the back foot and deflated. Feeling sorry for themselves, really. I feel sorry for the Sheffield United fans. So do I. So do I. Saliba. Good money. L listen, they've had a bad time of it. The, the, the owners tried to sell up, hasn't worked. They sold their two best players. Players that they had last season have gone off their loans that they had with them as well. Here's Havertz down this near side, plays it against the midriff. Just give it. Oh dear. Oh no, it's given off side. No, he, he raised his flag, the assistant on this near side, and for a moment there, it looks like he was going to place it across his chest and give a penalty. He didn't, and that's a bit of a let off. Uh, but they've had they've had their problems off the field. You know, they tried yeah. to sell the club, they couldn't get the the funds in to complete what was a takeover with a Nigerian billionaire, and then the uh, the owner Prince Abdullah had to well decided because they were in the last year their contracts in Jai and. Uh, Sander Berger would be sold off because they wouldn't sign new deals. They had uh, Tommy Doyle on loan last season. They couldn't re-sign him again. They have picked up McAtee, which has been a benefit for them in the yeah. Premier League. But their squad is lighter than it was when they were in the Championship. And in the Championship, they didn't have the best squad, but they did a good job to get up. I agree. I mean, the, the players you've just mentioned were, would, would get in this team for sure. Um, so they are weaker against better opposition every week. And their confidence so, has been absolutely battered recently. So I think Paul Heckingbottom and now Chris Wilder have had to sort of try and do it with one hand tied behind their back, really. But yeah, that but doesn't can... excuse performances no. of this level. No, no. I mean, the easiest thing to do is shut up. Not easy, but it's easier to shut up shop and be defensively tight to a degree. Three games on the spin is not acceptable at any level. And that's three games on the spin at home, by the way. Yeah. That's that's not all told. That's at home, and there were better signs actually in the game against uh, Wolves in the uh, one-nil defeat. Uh, they might be coming a, a little bit more offensive. It was only the sixth time this season they'd registered more shots on target than their opponents. I don't think that's going to be a statistic that is tested tonight. We played 48 and a half minutes. It's nearly half time. It's Sheffield United nil, Arsenal five, and uh, Martinelli, Erdegaard. Havertz, Rice, and an own goal from Bogle, which was created by Saka, who's now got 50 assists and counting. In fact, 51 assists now what's and the, counting. What, what's the record, Sam? Nine? Nine. League win. A win by nine goals, yeah. Was that Tottenham Ipswich, was it? It's it was quite, quite a few teams have done it. Oh, Manchester okay. United Ipswich That's have done it. United Ipswich, uh, yeah. Southampton have been beaten 9 0 by Leicester and uh, Manchester United. And uh, there are records to go here for Arsenal and the way things are going they will certainly be testing the record books that is for sure they've just been keeping possession for the last two or three minutes as we uh, limp towards half time with 30 seconds of added time still to play uh, Jorginho on to White let's wonder what Mikel Arteta says at half time to his team it depends which way whether he wants to really go for it or whether he just he could easily tell them to take it easy because there are big games ahead, irrelevant of the goal difference. I know what you were saying before, but you don't want players pushing it too much when they don't need to, when they've got so many big games ahead of them. So many good big games still to play, and so many records to chase. I mentioned before that uh, they need one now for their 10,000th goal. They got five in the first half. The boos at the break are for the Blades, because they have been nothing short of abysmal. Erdegaard, Vogel's own goal, Martinelli, Havertz and Rice have done the damage and the damage is significant. Arsenal came here to win, they came here to add to their goal difference. Everybody was predicting a riot and that is exactly what has happened. Sheffield United nil, Arsenal five at half time. Wow, just wow, live on game night on Talk Sport. And that goal difference, by the way, for uh, Arsenal now up to plus 44, Liverpool plus 39, Manchester City lagging behind plus 35. They will be lagging behind with Erling Haaland missing the sitters. He's been missing. 
And so much for the red and white wizards. Arsenal have been cast in spells. They've been brilliant. Garbage from Sheffield United, whose fans have been leaving early. They've not just gone to the concourse for a drink. They've actually gone home already. There was actually a 14-minute spell where Arsenal didn't score a goal. I think that uh, constitutes some sort of moral victory for the Blades tonight. And here's a message to owners of football clubs that get promoted to the Premier League and to managers and players fresh into the Premier League. There is no shame in losing to top sides, even at home. But the way Sheffield United have set up for the Premier League by selling their best players on the eve of the season, the way the manager set them up tonight, the way the players waved the white flag, they clearly didn't believe in the system, all of that stuff is shameful. They've not just let their fans down tonight, Sheffield United, they've embarrassed their fans, humiliated them. Some of them so ashamed of the players and the performance and the manager and the club, they could not bear to stay and witness this. Liverpool came here and won 2-0. They didn't score the second till the 94th minute. There was a bit of fight then. Man City came here. It was one all in the 87th minute. It's a rollover here tonight, and Arsenal have won the lottery. And they're playing like millionaires. It's some of the richest gold standard football we've seen this season from Arsenal. They look unstoppable. Three against Liverpool, four against Newcastle, five at Burnley, six at West Ham. How many will they rack up here tonight? Newcastle got eight without reply here in September. And Danny Murphy, you talked about the the record 9-0. It's been done by Man United twice. Leicester did it at Southampton. Liverpool did it last season against Bournemouth. 9-0 is the record. Arsenal could easily beat that in the second half here tonight. They could. I'm not sure they will go all out. Only because of what's coming. Um, And also psychologically as a player, it's hard to maintain that level of sharpness and that running off the ball and creating space when you you know you've got things coming down the line. They've had a lot of games recently, but it is it's been great from Arsenal. The the Declan Rice position a bit further ahead, bombing into spaces, using his athleticism to break the lines, um, the the speed in which they've played, the, the the rotation. Sometimes we see Martinelli drifting in. He has had a couple of chances centrally. They've been really sharp, really at it. And I know we, we've talked about Sheffield United, we'll go back to that, but I think it's worth saying that you've got to be bang at it to score five in one half of football. Well, I've, I've enjoyed watching yeah, Arsenal play tonight. Absolutely. And when you look at them, when they're scoring the goals, and I know everybody's happy when they score goals, but even just in general play, it's like when you, you know how some players, you'll, you'll have been involved in this, in training sessions are really enjoying it. They're having a great time enjoying the football. That's what it's like. Here. It's a bit like a training session, but every single Arsenal player is thoroughly enjoying it. Yeah, and your confidence goes through the roof. Everybody wants the ball. Everybody's got energy and thinks they can get a goal. It's just maintaining that level through a 90-minute period. But ultimately, at this stage of the season, I know goal difference might end up being relevant. There could be a point. It could be. But right now, if I'm Arteta and I'm a player in there, I'm just thinking we've done the job. Let's keep everyone, let's not, nothing stupid. Be careful. They might lose their head, come out with a bit of aggression, someone getting hurt in a tackle. You know, the, those type of things can be in the back of your mind. Let's keep doing the, uh, the fundamentals well. Let's, let's make sure we don't give them an opportunity to do anything stupid towards in terms of the tackles, like I've just said. But also... Um, giving the lads on the bench who've maybe not got the minutes under the belt like Partey who could be crucial we talked about this before get him on now get him on nothing to lose is there get Jesus on get, yeah. some, get, get some minutes in his legs in a game where you can have loads of the ball I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple of change for Arsenal when they come out well I did say the scoreboard away to my left was nil-nil just before kick-off and I said it wouldn't stay like that it hasn't well half of it has Sheffield United nil Arsenal 5 the Gunners have been that good in fact, that probably flatters Sheffield United a little bit. They've been terrible, but Arsenal have been truly brilliant. They've played like champions, dare I say, tonight live on game night on Talk Sport, where we bring you some amazing boxing coverage across our platforms. Tune in on Friday from 9pm for Knockout Chaos as Anthony Joshua takes on Francis Ngannou in Saudi Arabia. Join Adam Catra, Spencer Oliver and Hall of Famer Carl Frotch for the live watch-along on the Talk Sport Boxing YouTube channel or listen live via DAB, your smart speaker, or the TalkSport app. This game is over. It's a three-pointer for Arsenal. But who knows how many goals they might just rack up in the second half. You might be witnessing a brand-new Premier League record live on game night on TalkSport. 
Monday game night on Talk Sport with Ladbrokes. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus be gambleaware.org. McDelivery, you in? Oh, am I? What a day. I need six chicken McNuggets, or maybe nine, or maybe six and a cheeky cheeseburger. Makes sense. With something sweet to follow, like an apple pie, or a McFlurry, or I could get a milkshake instead. You know, a nice halfway house of drink and ice cream. Jane, the game's just starting. Oh, hi. Yeah, sorry. I'm in. There's nothing quite like a McDelivery. You in? At participating restaurants only. 18 plus. Serving times, delivery fees and terms apply. See app or mcdonalds.com for details. Hope there won't be any VAR delays today. <laughs> Heard that rumour about their striker. Can't wait to see what the pundits make of that booking. Looking forward to the match report on this one. When it comes to football, never miss a story. Get the best news, opinion, interviews and gossip at thesun.co.uk. For the football lowdown every day, it's thesun.co.uk. When the kids eat us out of house and home, we just eat groceries from Sainsbury's. When do they leave home? Get Sainsbury's Asda and Co-op delivered for free. For groceries and everything else. Did somebody say Just Eat? Participate in stores. A minimum spend applies. Other charges apply. Subject to availability. See justeat.co.uk for details. We all fantasize about our perfect home. Watching the big game cozied up in the snug. Balmy summer nights with the kids playing on the lawn. We're playing around my football. But come on, this isn't real. Listen, if you're serious about making your fantasy a reality, find out what your home is worth instantly with a free online valuation estimate. Get real about moving. Get on the market. Most common time to obtain an online quote between 1st of June 2022 and 30th of September 2022 is under three minutes. Excludes Northern Ireland. Don't break your stride. Hurry to Screwfix for unmissable deals on trade essentials. Big paint job on? Buy the Fortress big box set for $27.99 and get a half-price extension pole for just $7.47. Patios and driveways in need of a clean? Get the Titan pressure washer for just $59.99. Shop now on the app at screwfix.com or in-store. Delivery fees may apply. Prices valid until at least April 1st. Subject to availability. See screwfix.com for full T's and C's. There will be 14 minutes of extra time. With Betfair's 90-minute payout, you don't have to wait for the final whistle to celebrate. Because your winning bet will be paid out in full at 90 minutes. Betfair. Applies to match odds 90 market or markets with a 90 icon. Sportsbook exclusive. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Monday game night on Talk Sport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Enterprise has vans of all shapes and sizes. So if you've got a plan, we've got a van. Colossal commentary on a Monday night. Join us in the promised land of the Premier League. Absolutely outstanding. This is game night. On Talk Sport. Right through the centre. Into Erdegaard. There's the goal. It was coming. Saka on the outside. Beats Trusty. Oh gets into God. the penalty area. Pulls it back into the area. It comes off the defender. Goes in. It's an own goal. It's pathetic. It's embarrassing. Martinelli, he's got Rice through the centre. It's Martinelli, it's in. It's 3-0. Oh, my word. What on earth is going on here? Martinelli's been rushed up to the floor, but it comes to Havertz, oh. who arrows it into the corner and past the goalkeeper. And it's 4-0. 4-0 after 24 minutes. Here down the oh. right-hand side, Saka, lovely bit of skill, pulls it back through the oh. area. It's he's... Rice. It's five. Declan Rice runs over to celebrate in the corner. Saka with another assist. It's a brilliant goal from Arsenal. And I don't think they've stopped just yet. Odegaard, a Bogle own goal. Martinelli, Havertz and Rice. It's 5-0. 5-0 to Arsenal at halftime on Game Night Live on TalkSport and there's more football coming up for you tomorrow night I'll be around the grounds all the goals as they go in I'll be uh, hosting it live from Sunderland against Leicester who've lost the last three but remain top of the championship table we'll take you around the grounds bring you all the goals as they go in if it's commentary you want TalkSport 2 have got exclusive commentary of Leeds 
who are still going for automatic promotion, drop points live on TalkSport on Saturday against Stoke, who won on Saturday but remain in the bottom three. Big one affects both ends of the table. Leeds Stoke tomorrow night, live and exclusive on TalkSport 2 or around the grounds with all the goals as they go in with me from seven on TalkSport. And on Wednesday night, a couple of commentaries for you. We've got Man City, Copenhagen. I'll be at the Etihad for that. Champions League round of 16. Second leg, City 3-1 up. That's live on TalkSport. And on TalkSport 2, it's Southampton against Preston in the Championship. Southampton going for automatic promotion. Preston going for the playoffs. And need to go one better than Saturday when they were held at home by fellow playoff contenders. Hull City. Let's get the halftime odds right now with Labrooks. Odds update on Talk Sport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus be gambler.org. Well, uh, we haven't got Sheffield United to win, obviously. Uh, Sheffield United, Arsenal to score the sixth goal. Sheffield United a 6 to 1. Arsenal 7 to 2 on. No further scorer. 11 to 2. Next goal scorer, Martin Odegaard scorer braces 3 to 1. Uh, Maxi to score or assist for Sheffield United is 8-1. to one. That's the latest odds with Labrooks. Play at labrooks.com, 18 plus begambleaware.org. Updates on TalkSport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus begambleaware.org. Well, in around about an hour's time, it's going to be the uh, sports bar on TalkSport. The boys have left us a voice note ahead of the show. Sports bar coming up with me, Jamie Hyre, and Jason Cundy tonight. We are watching Sheffield United v Arsenal. Could be 20 nil. I think Cundy could maybe even get a goal tonight for Arsenal. What do you think? Jamie, mate, I'll score my own goal here, as Bogle did. I want to know, what is Chris Wilder's halftime team talk like? Send in your voice note. What would you say if you're Chris Wilder at halftime? And also, did you leave before halftime? And what did you get up to? Sports bar from 10 pm, taking your calls, get involved is going to be a big one. Excellent stuff. That number, 03717223344. And you can leave your WhatsApp voice notes on that number as well, 03717223344. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's ask Danny Murphy, what would the team talk have been for Chris Wilder at halftime? As uh, Arsenal getting ready to come out, what would Chris Wilder have said to them? It's a difficult one because the the instinct in a manager who cares which he does of course would be to tear them apart but they're so shot and their confidence is so low that I think he's got to whatever changes he's made make that clear what they're going to do what's the new plan is it restrict drop off let's no more goals and try and just limit the damage or do we try go on the front foot a bit more get a bit higher up the pitch and try and get us get a goal I've got a feeling it'll be Limit the damage. Do managers talk about pride or winning a second half or anything yes, like that? That, that goes second, on, does it? Winning yeah. a second half, yeah. yeah. Is yeah. that a real thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And does that work in the minds of players? It, it, it can with some. It can reset your focus into just making it this half. Yes, it, it's one of the... Some people think it's a load of nonsense, but actually in the, in the moment it can work. It's one of those sayings that can really just help some players refocus and actually just think, look, especially those coming on as well, let's try and be part of the half where we don't concede anymore and show the fans that we can by not give up, not throw in the towel and not get done again by a silly amount like Newcastle did when they come here. He's got to say, whatever he thinks it takes for that group of players to raise their level somehow. But there should be some individual pride that means the manager's words are irrelevant. You've got to come out and fight your own corner. Could be a new man, you know... you. Next season, some of these lads will, might not want to be in the championship. Who's going to take these lads under that performance? Nobody. Literally nobody. Arsenal went into a huddle just a moment ago before we get underway in this second half. I reckon the music for Arsenal in the uh, dressing room might have been a bit of steps. Five, six, seven, eight. Who knows how many hey. we're going to get in this second half. Sheffield United nil. Arsenal five. Second half. Live and exclusive on game night on TalkSport with the former England midfielder. Danny Murphy alongside Sam Mathface. George Bordock is coming on, Willis Sula and Andre Brooks coming on as well. McAtee, Davis are off. And there is another one who's gone off as well, but I didn't quite catch that because I was catching what was catching my eye was the integration of Fabio Vieira into the team at the expense of Bakayo Saka. 
And there has been criticism previously from Mikhail on Mikel Arteta for not managing to protect Bukayo Saka. But uh, he's certainly done that today as they come forward into the penalty area. Harmer for Sheffield United trying to get to, onto a fast start here at uh, Bramall Lane, the second half, attacking the cop away to our right hand side. Bulldog has just uh, sent the ball towards the edge of the area. Bogle's cracked one goal, was it's blocked by Rice. Martinelli got a little finger in the face from Bulldog as he went down that right touch line. He went down and after the attack dissipated. Well, two things, Sam. I think we're burning you the one coming off. The, the other thing is, I don't understand when you get an eye. I've had the finger in the eye many times. Where, what, when did it start affecting your legs? <laughs> I don't understand. Why does he go over when he's tracking a runner? You can put your hand to your eye and you can go, oh my god, but your other eye works and your legs still work. What if that was the last minute against Man City or Liverpool? Maybe I'm being a bit of a pedant. The other change, I think, is McBurney who's come off as I well to be replaced you by. Listen, listen I wasn't idiot. listening. I was just doing the. Uh, uh, I was concentrating on the game. I Sorry. Said there's two, no, you weren't. <laughs> what was I doing then? If I weren't concentrating, you on were the game? trying to find out uh, over there who was brought. And I told you who'd come off. Uh, I was getting distracted. Come on, listen, listen. We're a team. Sorry. <laughs> I've gone to bits like Sheffield United's <laughs> defence. Yes, a little bit. He didn't give me a good enough half-time team talk. That's the problem. How the, how the hell is Trusty still on the pitch in, as well? In fact, you know what it is? It's deck because he didn't bring those snacks. Ah, that's it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bulldog for McAtee, Asula for McBurney, and Brooks for Davis. Just a confirmation of those changes. And uh, Saka off, Vieira on for Arsenal. And Martinelli is OK. He's had his treatment, and he is back on. I did have a look at the uh, Premier League records at half-time, so I know you were keen to to find out if anyone's come back from 5-0 down. They haven't. There was a 5-5 draw, though. West Brom against Manchester, Manchester United. Yeah, in the last ever Sir Alex Ferguson game correct. in charge. Lukaku played, didn't he? Yeah, 7-4 Portsmouth Reading. I mentioned in the first half. The 9 nils Manchester United Ipswich, Manchester United Southampton, Liverpool against Bournemouth, and Southampton against Leicester. All 9 nil scorelines. Yeah. yeah, he did that half-time. If you hadn't disappeared, chance of someone over there, you might have heard it. That was going to the toilet. Oh, OK. Is that okay? <laughs> You're bored now, aren't you? He said to me at oh, half time. Do you know what he said to me at half time? He said to me, he said to me, oh, it's going to be difficult in the second half. And I thought, oh no, I know what that means. It's, it's always difficult when you haven't been sugared up at half time, isn't it? It is. Think? It is, yeah. Are you regularly not sugared up at half time? <laughs> <laughs> Arsenal <laughs> on the halfway line. Uh, certainly, uh, they looked like they were sugared up before the start of the yeah. game. <laughs> they did start um, that way. <laughs> Trustly trying to half clear. <laughs> it's picked up on the far side and set up towards Brooks, who drives upfield into opposition territory. He's got support from Willa Sula through the centre, uh, but he's uh, huffed out of it. The ball is cleared by Arsenal. Brooks has got it back again, charging forward down towards the left edge of the area. Big and powerful moving into the box at speed, and no little skill as well by Brooks. Andre Brooks, who darted into the penalty area there and then gave the ball away to Erdogan and now a chance for Martinelli to sprint up against Atma Hodzic, oh who's gone past him far too easy, he misjudged that run Atma Hodzic gets to the edge of the area Martinelli, then goes and takes him on again beats him again, into the penalty area and Atma Hodzic has to come across and push the ball out of play and Martinelli out of play and give away a corner. Do you know what I love about Martinelli there, he, he had the willingness to go past him initially with his speed and his pace and use the space then he knew there were, there weren't people joining him, so he came back and had the football intelligence to keep the ball. Then he's gone again and done him again because that's where the space was. Really good play from him. And also, after I was sampling the thoughts of the uh, Sheffield United supporters, some interesting things came out of those conversations, which I'll illuminate you on as we go on throughout the, uh, the evening. Four minutes gone in the second half. It's Sheffield United nil, Arsenal five. So a slow start to the second half, really, for Arsenal. Ball in towards the near post, headed away by Souza, and it's out of play level with the edge of the penalty area. And, and a lot of them were sort of talking about the, the, the tactical issues that you'd pointed out, the trusty playing at left-back. Why on earth they decided to do that? At least put someone like Robinson there with some of the suggestion. At least you've got that someone who'll go out and engage with yeah, Saka. Yeah, he's quicker, he's quicker. Low sense of gravity against Saka, of course. Makes sense. Uh, and the other thing they were sort of discussing was is how it feels like the teams that come up from the Championship just cannot compete in the Premier League. 
Uh, we'll discuss that later. Erdogan uh, plays it square into White, out to the far side, and Fabio Vieira. Back to the edge of the centre circle, and then Saliba will come forward. So Arsenal in those bright yellow jerseys with blue swirls on the lines, the spaghetti lines that are going through that steward fluorescent yellow. Attacking the goal away to our left where their supporters are waiting for more goals, I think. And the ball's bounced kindly for Havertz here, left side of the area. Tries to get away from Souza, who commits a challenge, and it's going to be a free kick on the edge of the box. I understand that, you know, just briefly, the coming up from the Championship and struggling, of course, with the fine and all that stuff. But this is a Sheffield United team who, you know, when Aid went through the uh, scores, uh, they competed here against Manchester City early in the season. Same group of players, they competed against Liverpool. They've had performances where they showed it better than what they've showed the last three games. You can't three home games on the spin be conceding five without a fight. That's that's not about the quality. That's about attitude. Yeah. It's about desire. It's about willingness to put yourself on the line for those around you, the fans, the manager, yourself. Tracking runners, getting out to people, closing people down. Simple stuff. Six minutes gone in the second half. Still Sheffield United in the Arsenal five. And the uh, call, the free kick to be taken just outside the penalty area, about two steps back from the left side of it. It's just narrowly what would be regarded inside the last 18. So it's wide of the box, left side for Rice to hit it right-footed. In towards that near corner, and the goalkeeper went across and grabbed it. And he went down a little uncertainly and uh, pulled it into his chest, Gerbich. Yeah, I'm not sure whether he was trying to catch him out there, Declan Rice, or whether he was trying to put a normal cross in. Maybe he was trying to catch him out. Well, I think poor old Ivo Gerbic has had a terrible start to his Sheffield United career, really. He was bought in because I think they felt that Wes Fodderingham wasn't doing them any favours. But this is his fourth appearance tonight for Sheffield United. He was subbed with a head injury in the game against Crystal Palace on his debut. He conceded five goals from five shots on target in his debut in the FA Cup. And he's conceded five here. Here's Vieira into Martinelli. Martinelli with a poor effort on goal. Should have been six, by the way. And it's cleared away, hoiked away uh, by uh, Arma Hodzic. Back with Erdegaard into the area. Kibio going down the left-hand side. And, uh, I mean, it wasn't a foul, but Harma has won the foul and Sam Barrett, being very charitable, gives a free kick to Sheffield United. It was actually one of those moments where, you know, when Vieira gets in, you think, if that's Saka, he's away. And he just hasn't got that burst that Saka got. So he makes the right choice in trying to play it, but he, hits it, it's, he overhits it to Martinelli, who has to stretch, and it's a bit high for him. He does all right getting a contract on it in the end, to be honest. Sheffield United behind at half-time for the 14th time this season. And they did recover once back in November down at the Amex Stadium to get a draw, but they won't be doing that tonight. 5-0 will score. Arsenal, who finished five points behind Manchester City last season, closest to the champion since they finished four points behind Manchester United in 2008, hoping to get even closer, if not be the champions themselves at the end of the campaign, have been ruthless, sharp and incisive throughout the course of the game. They have no need to force the issue now. They can ease their way through 45 minutes but they come forward with Erdegaard who poked the ball down the right to Ben White White travels to the corner flag back heel to Havertz he finds uh, Erdegaard he skips past Brooks and gets to the edge of the penalty area plays it to Kivior he pops it off to Gabriel they're so crisp with their passing here Arsenal so confident there's a swagger about them Martinelli's crossed a good one it's deep away by Trusty it's chested down by White on the edge of the box and uh, it's cleared away by Good Brooks move from field. Arsenal that that was better a bit more speed in the play and a slick and fast tempoed they move again down the right hand side an almost empty uh, half empty Bramall Lane that's probably a fair reflection Jorginho forward uh, gets the ball back again after half hard shot shouts for a handball then wins it for a second time when Sheffield United failed to clear cleanly eventually it's pumped out of field over on the far side by Anel Akma Hodzic, bit and better it goes out for a throw-in. From Sheffield United, a bit closer together, a bit more intensity in the in the tackle and the closing down and the blocks. When I say a bit, just a little. It's about marginal gains. Yeah, it is. He can tell he's had a pop at them. There seems to be a little bit more intensity, but they're still pinned back. You really expected him to, wouldn't you? Uh, he's not a shrinking violet, is uh, Chris Wilder, who's got Alan Neil, Matt Prestridge, 
Uh, and uh, Jack Lester alongside him, and Keith Andrews as well nowadays. Down on the touchline, here is uh, Kivior for Arsenal, who come forward again with Gabriel. Gabriel attacking the goal away to our left, the rain continues to tumble. Arsenal hope it's records that go as the game goes on. I think it was a rainy day here when Newcastle came and smashed them by eight. Back it goes into uh, Gabriel, and then on to Jorginho, who chips it forward down the right channel, headed away by Trusty. The ball drops, and it's allowed to bounce, and Brooks really shouldn't have allowed that to happen, and Arsenal have got it back again. It's with Erdegaard. Into Havertz, back to goal, right side. Back into Erdegaard once again, and then on to Havertz, who strokes it into Declan Rice, who runs with his chest puffed out, and he elongates his stride as he works his way down towards the left half of the field now. It's into Martinelli, then on to Gabriel, who's ten yards back from the edge of the box. It wasn't a great ball by him, but don't worry, he'll come and win it back again before even Willisula can think about escaping upfield, and Arsenal continue to pressurise. Down the right it goes via Erdegaard to Vieira, on to the sun-kissed Ben White, and then back into Vieira once again. And he then... all, he's always got a tan, hasn't he? Yeah. Fair play to him. Yeah. Just nicks off for a couple of days, I yeah. think, to Mallorca every yeah. now and again. I don't think he's not a sunbed lad. No, no, I wouldn't have thought so. Uh, here is uh, Martinelli, back into Kivior, back to Gabriel, then to Jorginho, edge of the D. Uh, you're definitely not, are you? No. Uh, Jesus, no. It's back to Kivior once again. A little flick round the corner. Uh, then into Declan Rice, who's inside the box. A little pop back to Rice again, edge of the oh. area. It's beautiful from Arsenal. That was beautiful. They're the ones that you used to do at training, and then you get in a match and you you just flicks round corners, playing blind, little tricks. It's, they're enjoying themselves. The only problem is now they've got a line of five to try and get through. They're not coming out. They're just keeping in that line of five, which is understandable. Well, they're trying to keep the score down, aren't they, yeah. now, Sheffield United? That's their uh, their duty. As the ball goes over the top to Havertz, who Great takes it shot. out of the sky. It's a beautiful touch to come in field. He sets it back for Ben White, who strikes Whoa. it into the corner. It's a thunderbolt from Ben White. An unstoppable Arsenal strike again. And it's Ben White who gets their latest goal. It's their sixth goal, their 10,000th of all time. And even more Sheffield United fans depart. But bravo, Ben White. That was some hit from the edge of the box. Accurate and firm into the far corner after another very good tempo-setting one-touch move from Arsenal. 6-0. Well, I'll tell you what it was, Sam. It was another great bit of movement from Havertz. And we've talked about his game intelligence and what his best position is. When he does play higher up the pitch, he does, he's got a great awareness of when to run in behind and when to come to feet. He's not the quickest, but his movement in behind is always good. And it's a lovely touch from him puts inside and squares it and to be fair to Ben White he has to take it on his left foot and strikes it sweetly it's just stretching for it right keep up gets a fingertip to it but it's a good strike from Ben White well we have six and Arsenal have six again for the second time in 2024 and Albert Steubenberg and Mikel Arteta in conversation on the touchline as they continue to rack up the goals. I'd be, I'd, I'd, the first player I'd be bringing off is Declan Rice. And then maybe Odegaard as well. Those two play so many minutes, Sam, don't they? Next game for Arsenal is against Brentford on Saturday. It is uh, five full days away before they play that game. It's not just that game, though. It's the one Porto after straight that. straight yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Then they've got uh, more than 20 or 19 days rest. For those who don't go away on international duty, that is. Which most do, don't they? Yeah, I think they do in this Arsenal team, yeah. <laughs> Gabriel Jesus won't be going away. He's been left out of the current Brazil squad after uh, his injury issues. They are allowing him to stay at uh, London Colney to get back into shape with Arsenal. He could be unleashed from the bench tonight. Kibior down the left. Just the one substitution for Arsenal so far. Erdegaard into Jorginho, Martinelli round the corner, tries to get the better of Akmahodzic, he fancies himself against Akmahodzic, and it goes out for a corner. Jorginho's got a lovely uh, eye for the for the final killer pass, you know. Don't talk about it enough, we've seen it a couple of times in recent games when he's played, but he's always been able to, when he's higher up the pitch, 
play those little killer throws, little clever inside the full back or inside the centre half. I think he was the man of the match in the game against uh, Newcastle yeah. last Saturday. I thought he was terrific. Yeah, he was. Here is uh, Declan Rice to take the corner from this near side. He sends it right-footed in towards the near post. It's missed by the goalkeeper. It pops out off of the Sheffield United head. Brooks will collect it down the left side. He can't clear it because it's blocked by Ben White. And Actually, the Arsenal, look at the Arsenal captain, Erdegaard. It's Sheffield United's throw in the left fullback position, and he's just turned around to his team who was starting to retreat and said, Press, squeeze yeah. them in the corner. Exactly that. I like it. I think it actually came off Saliba, you know. I'm not sure he knew where he was going to hit him on the head. Just have a look, maybe see a replay in a minute, but. Well, they're warming up the substitutes. Even Cedric is warming up down in uh, front of us. Lesser spotted Cedric Suarez. Here is uh, Erdegaard into Martinelli, edge of the box, hooked away by Souza, headed forward out towards the right side towards v Vieira. Ben Osborne uh, gets it away. It bounces for uh, Osula. Osborne's got it once more. He turns out towards the uh, far side, but then uh, immediately the Arsenal press is on. They're making it really difficult for Sheffield United to get the ball clear. And uh, Robinson will bring it out towards this near side. Arthur Hodzic takes over. Powers up towards the halfway line. Slips it down the right. The Bosnian into no one in particular. Might come through uh, on this near side for Bogle. Who puts it through the legs of the defender. Finds Baldock. He's inside the box now. Can he pull it through the area? He can, but it's straight at David Raya. And he will run to the edge of the box. Nearly. First decent move. Martinelli's gone down. That's a concern for Arsenal. Yeah, he's gone down the edge of the uh, the box. They're making some subs anyway. I see three or four of them getting well, three of them getting stripped. Yeah, they'll just want to get it sorted. Uh, I think Sheffield United are going to get uh, some substitutes onto the. Uh, you did make me smile, Sam. Did I? How? Even Cedric's warming up. <laughs> <laughs> he's, hardly, I mean... hardly, he's hardly played a game, has he? You know, over the course of the last few years. I know, but you made it sound like he was season. a ball boy or something. <laughs> well, he spent the second half of last season on loan at Fulham. He's been on as a sub, actually, in no, two I of the last No, I know what you meant. I know what you meant. He's been a bit part he has, player. He has. Let's just put it like that. Um, Martinelli is still receiving treatment down in front of us. Let me tell you about what's coming up on TalkSport over the course of the next couple of days, because uh, not only are Ali and Jeff back together tomorrow to dissect what's been a comprehensive Arsenal victory here tonight. But also, uh, over the course of the next few days, we've got live commentaries for you uh, incoming. 12 in seven days. Unbelievable. Uh, we're around the grounds with Adrian tomorrow whilst on TalkSport 2 leads against Stoke. The Southampton Preston is TalkSport 2's commentary on Wednesday night while we bring you Manchester City versus FC Copenhagen. Sparta Prague, Liverpool Thursday. Freiburg, West Ham is live on TalkSport on Thursday. Sheffield Wednesday leads Friday night. Manchester United, Everton Saturday. Cardiff, Ipswich. Wolves, Fulham. Huddersfield, West Brom. And Tottenham against Manchester City in the Women's FA Cup quarter-final all this weekend on TalkSport. Bad news this for Arsenal, though. This is not what they want to see. A hobbling Martinelli using two of the medical staff as crutch as he hops off with his right foot, not able to bear any weight. That is a worry. So this is the worst problem. Your, your game's won. I know you can't predict who's going to get injured or him going over on his ankle, whatever he's done. But that is a blow for them. Uh, Akwa Hodzic has come off, and our blaster has come on to go into midfield. So another change of uh, formation for uh, Sheffield United. They're making substitutions now. Gabriel Jesus comes on to replace Martinelli. Well, to be fair to Jesus, he's comfortable playing wide. We saw him do it for City many, many times yeah. successfully. Off comes Jorginho to be replaced by Thomas Partey. I'm amazed at that. And the other change is going to be Cedric for Ben White. I understand that, because at fullback you have to do a lot of bombing, and White has absolutely flown forward loads of times. So, yeah. His only goal against uh, Bournemouth in September before tonight, Ben White, but he has a second one on the board this evening scoring the sixth goal of Arsenal's evening. It is currently a Sheffield United nil, Arsenal six. The latest odds are available at Labbrooks, but right now you can back Sheffield United to score the next goal at six to one, Arsenal to score the next 
next goal at 15 to 8 on. No one to score again at 5 to 2. It's all thanks to Ladbrokes 18 plus. Be gamble aware. Dot all. You lost your 5 5 bet. Do you know what? I'm on a more serious note. I, I'm, I'm really surprised that he's left Price on. Jorginho sitting in there, not having to do too much running. Keep, keeps the ball moving nice and comfortably. He hasn't played that much this season. Rice plays so much. He's still bombing forward, making runs. Look, protects your best asset. He does look like he's enjoying himself. Oh, though. yeah, but just because you're enjoying yourself doesn't mean it's the right thing to stay on when you've got two You, you would have been moody if you were having a good game like he is tonight, running the show, scoring goals, assisting goals. You're winning 6-0 away from home. You know you can, might get another one. You, you'd, you'd be moody if someone took you off, wouldn't you? Yeah. Of course. You just, you were, it's a compliment. <laughs> Especially yeah, when you is. walk off in a mood and the manager says, you know, I need you, you know, I've got to save you. Yeah. It makes you feel good, bit of ego boost. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. you get a good clap when you come off. Yeah. Well, he's definitely going to get one of those tonight because he's been terrific. Arsenal have been terrific. There's no doubting their quality as they Ooh. give the ball away. Partey's first touch, actually, but not a very good one. Giving it straight to Harmer. And it's invited a Sheffield United counter-attack. Souza's squeezed it out towards his near side. Declan Rice has come across to cover. They've won it back uh, from Bogle. And then it's all the way to Raya, who will kick clear upfield, looking for Havertz, who actually is the only player forward at this moment in time. Goes back to Gerbich. And he looks uh, sharp, Havertz, doesn't he? Looks, he looks yes. like he's really at his best physically. He's, he's playing very well, I think. Yeah. You know, he's scored now, what, 3-3 three and three for Arsenal in the Premier League. He uh, has assisted goals as well tonight. He's, uh, he's been uh, important for them. Well, and he's going to have to be, especially because it doesn't look like Martinelli. That doesn't look like a, a few days, that one. That looks a bit worse than that, unfortunately. Well, I might hope I'm wrong for his sake. Yeah, well, once you get one back, you seem to lose another. That seems yeah. to be the way of the, the Premier League this yeah. season, doesn't it? Uh, Jürgen Klopp bemoaning that as well. Sheffield United have it deep inside their own half. 67 minutes on the clock. It's Sheffield United nil, Arsenal six. And that's the latest at this moment in time. By no means will it be the uh, the final act, I don't think, in front of goal. I think there'll be more between now and the end. See, the other thing I'm, I'm a bit bemused by is... Oh, go on. ...why Chris Wilder stood out in a technical area, how he thinks he can help the players from there now when the 6 nil down. Surely you'd be sitting back in your dugout and seeing which players are on, have got your back, which players are going to put it in for you and who are going to react to this performance. Yeah, but Danny, if he was sitting down and not doing anything, he'd be getting pelters from the fans and not trying to influence proceedings, wouldn't he? He's not going to win either way, is yeah, he? Yeah, fair point. Fair point. I still wouldn't I still wouldn't be stood out there. Not in the rain, anyway. Exactly. 68. I'd have a brolly. <laughs> you wouldn't. <laughs> you got no air to miss up. I know. Uh, here is Jesus on the near touchline. Uh, back on halfway is Declan Rice. Rice, who's hoping to be part of that England squad, will be part of that England squad for the Euros. Sends it out wide towards Vieira. And uh, Osborne have just played him offside. So it's going to be a free kick in the left fullback position as a result of it. Do you want to go back to that question about competing with Premier League teams? Do you think there is a little bit of an issue that there, the gap between the top of the Championship and the bottom of the Premier League is getting too big? It does feel that way. Uh, there has been obviously teams in the past who've come up and done really well and and planned well and recruited well but it does seem to be getting harder yeah I think it's a fair point um, and maybe there has to be a rethink or a look at how that can change well, this is all about this new deal that they're talking yeah. about with the the Premier League giving money filtering it down the pyramid yeah it's a, it's a difficult one isn't it because generally your best players won't stay when you drop switch because they want to play in the Premier League, and understandably so. Jesus has it on halfway. Uh, it's tucked out towards the far side. Into Cedric. Cedric steers it back to uh, Saliba. And uh, Arsenal have enjoyed quite a silk road down that right side during the course of the game so far. He might have just lost a little bit without Ben White bombing on down that right side. He was very good at doing so in this game. He's rewarded with a goal in the match and assist too as it's flicked forward by Cedric in towards the right hand side across comes Trusty and puts it into row Z luckily that there is someone in that row there's, there's some <laughs> rows that haven't got people in anymore but I there think was there's, someone a, there. there's a good number that have stayed so yeah, it's been fair. impressive actually because yeah. it, it could have been you know the old uh, pulling the plug out of the sink couldn't it talking of brollies have you got one no you've got to get to the station haven't you no 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 no, no. oh you stay in a hotel no 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 all right, get picked doing? up. Oh, okay. Parte, edge of the area, onto Erdegaard. Erdegaard trying to get beyond the defender, and uh, 
Asula is trying to escape with the ball at his feet, but Arsenal come forward again down the right-hand side, and De Vieira is trying to keep the ball in down by the corner. He flicks it back and it ends up hitting his chest and going behind and away for a goal kick away to our left. Slightly to get disjointed now with the amount of subs and the lack of intensity when the game's so far ahead. It's it, that's why you don't get that many eight and nines because the best teams do just you just. I've played in games where you're totally dominant and you just subconsciously switch off a little bit and just protect yourself ready for what's coming yeah I, I mean going back to that competing in the Premier League thing I mean the, they've got the worst attack in the league Sheffield United yeah. the worst defence in the league the lowest amount of possession in the league the highest percentage of long passes in the league I mean those statistics are pretty brutal they, they were quite it's quite unusual for them to do what they did when they come up they come up from the championship and they actually got rid of their two, of their, players, two yeah. of their best players and not out of choice no but and didn't and didn't have a go in terms of investment yes they they, ver they, they very, very much didn't yeah. no Paul Heckingbottom was hamstrung right at the very beginning and it had the feel of inevitability about you it you know whereas Burnley start. have come up and spent a good few quid they just haven't spent it particularly well I remember Fulham doing the same many years ago spending a fortune yeah, and actually going loads, relegated they, yeah. because they only bought out of the seven or eight they bought they actually only bought one who played in the Premier League and that was Mitrovic, who had who'd been on, only had been on loan. So, spending the money and be, uh, getting your recruitment right when you come up from the, the championship is really hard. Arsenal popping it around on halfway, not really going anywhere with it at this moment in time. It's out towards the right side. They lead by six goals to nil. Uh, Brooks trying to bring it in from the left-hand side, plays it centrally, and then Robinson sends it towards... Uh, Bulldog, Rice is chasing him, making sure that he's uh, pressing from the front, leading the Arsenal team with his energy and his presence. It's frustrating, just, Danny. It, it's frustrating me because I think if he was to pull up with something, because in the last 20 minutes he's still trying, because he's enjoying himself so much, pressing people, making runs in behind, I think Mikel Arteta is missing a trick, not bringing him off. Protect the best player. He does have one sub still to play. It's one card to pull out of his pack. Here is Saliba out to Erdegaard. Erdegaard looks up and nudges it forward into the path of Havertz. Havertz now guides it back to Cedric. They're on the halfway line again. If you're Chris Wilder, how do you motivate this team? They are certainly going down. I mean, to reach the 35-point average required for survival, uh, as uh, Jesus tries to scamper down the right-hand side, he's offside. To, to, to reach the 35-point average, which is required for survival over the last 10 Premier League seasons, Sheffield United need another 22 points from 11 no, they're games. They're down, but what you mean is how do you motivate how'd, to keep... How'd, how'd you, what do you do going forward? Because it's not going to happen. How hard is well, his I, job I, now? I, I think you have to give them awareness of their, of their responsibility to themselves, their supporters, their family, and also make them aware that actually some of them might not be playing at the level they want to play at next season, even if it's championship, because of the performances if they carry on like this. Because what you're seeing here is a group of players who are lacking character at the moment. Well, the good news for you and for Arsenal and for Declan Rice, he's been protected by his manager. 73 minutes on the clock, he's been replaced by Leandro Trossard as Arsenal look to protect their best assets. They've taken off uh, Rice, Saka, uh, Jorginho, White. And unfortunately for them, they've had to take off Martinelli because of an injury. Yeah, that's the only downer for them on the night, isn't it? Apart from that, it's been a pretty perfect evening in Sheffield for, uh, for Arsenal. Sheffield, the city that uh, gave birth to the first, or if not for the first, certainly uh, the first registered football club. Havertz dropped into midfield, Jesus through the middle, Trossard on the left. And that's how it looks at this moment in time, with Havertz now on the ball, on halfway, attacking the goal, away to our left. Sheffield United with five strung across the back, trying to ensure that the damage that has already been done doesn't increase. They're already sinking fast towards the relegation zone and to the championship bottom of the table, stranded at this moment in time. And Arsenal have scored a flood of goals tonight. Are they already over the lowest points ever relegated, Sheffield United? Yes. They are already past that, OK. Yeah. No one wants that record, do they? No, but they might concede more goals than anybody else have ever done. In fact, it looks look increasingly likely the way things are going. What, what, where, going what's the, the difference with that, Sam? Um, at this moment in time, they, 89 goals was the record set 
16 years ago. They're on course at the current rate of exposure to concede 95. Yeah, they can't. They won't. We can't keep conceding five every game. You didn't expect me to have an answer for you there, did you? you no, I knew you did. Me. I set you up because I feel bad because I've been on you a bit tonight. And <laughs> I feel like you've you've been victimised. Do you? Mm. I, that's okay. I can handle. It. I've got a thick skin. Um, you've got yeah. thick hair. <laughs> <laughs> See, and you've gone back in again. <laughs> you just couldn't help You yourself. just keep throwing them up. <laughs> well, that's what partnerships do. Yeah, that's Danny, true. You know. That's true. I set them up, you knock them out of the park. Uh, here is Saliba, back to his goalkeeper. Team work makes the dream work, mate. That's right. Uh, here is Saliba down the far side until one of the team goes to HR. Yeah, here is uh, <laughs> Party out to Erdegaard, up to the halfway line. Erdegaard gets it back to Saliba, oh, and Saliba comes in field. Still 6 0 to Arsenal with 15 tepid minutes still to go. You just wonder how far Arsenal would be ahead if they didn't have December on their record. Here is Saliba down the right, all space for Jesus, who's got in between the lines. He pulls oh. it back instead of shooting. And Why? really, he should have hit it first time. He didn't, and he wins only a corner when he should have scored a certain goal. Danny. Do you know what? He is he is a very unselfish player, and I think at times he should be more ruthless. He's onside, smash it in the corner. I don't know what he's thinking. I don't know what he's thinking. Well, it was slightly too unselfish, I think, from uh, Gabriel Jesus, because a first-time finish across the goalkeeper, probably unstoppable in yep, those circumstances. Yeah, I completely agree. It wasn't as if he was too far wide. The angle wasn't exactly against him. It was a chance for Arsenal to extend their lead. Uh, they have a corner, which will be taken over on the far side by Fabio Vieira. New taker, because Rice is now absent. Left-footed, it's not a great delivery. There was pushing inside the six-yard box, which the referee was not comfortable with. So Vieira will get to do it again. And uh, he's had a word with Havertz and with uh, Robinson inside the penalty area here. I think we've Andre talked about Brooks. this before, Sam. Yes, we have. Why, Go on, I know what you're going to say. Yeah, why do? Why does the referee warn them? Why not just let them do what they've got to do and then make a decision either way if it's a free kick or a penalty? It's becoming a bit of a bugbear, that, I think, for a lot of uh, co-commentators. Six on the ball for Arsenal, looking for a seventh from this set piece, left footed ball this one's better, in towards the near post, it still doesn't beat the first man, Robinson away this time back to Vieira, who sends it into Erdegaard's path, he immediately shifts it onto his left foot, bends across into the box Kibio oh, with yeah. a header unmarked and he steered it wide, it was another chance he had so much time he could have actually brought it down on his chest and finished it, Kibio, he hasn't found himself in too many advanced positions I don't know who it is switched off there. Maybe not bring it down, to be honest, but it's a poor header, isn't it? Yeah, and one of the things that the Arsenal side have done recently is change the picture in terms of goal difference. They were eight goals scored behind Manchester City on January the 1st. They'd conceded more than Liverpool. Now they have the best defence and the best attack in the league. I think defensively is a huge thing for them. Yeah. Since Declan Rice has gone in there, they've looked better defensively. Saliba's improved. That partnership has blossomed with Gabriel. Neither of them have been injured, no. which and is a huge That was plus. so costly at the end of last Absolutely, season. Absolutely, yeah. And, of course, Jorginho adding some extra stability at times, especially in the big games. Arsenal trying to play their way out of the back. They do that into Partey, who sets the ball into Erdegaard, edge of the area. Now they're out on the left-hand side, and they're coming forward with five on four. If they get the pass right, Kivior didn't. And the Wrong door choice. was closed very quickly. And it's headed away by Bogle out on this near side. It remains 6-0 to Arsenal, live on Talk Sport tonight. And uh, we're here with now. And don't forget that with now, you can watch all the Sky Sports action without a subscription just by... Uh, Quite simply, getting a NOW membership. It's contract free. Search NOW Sports. Good ball. Lucky. Up towards uh, Gabriel Jesus from the right hand side. Didn't quite connect with it this time. Thomas Party gives him a thumbs up. Do you think, in your experience of interviewing managers and stuff after games, do you think Chris Wilde is going to go along the line saying, oh, look, we think we're much better second half? Um, <laughs> I think he's going to. Surely not. Just say that they were off the pace in the first half, probably lay into them a little bit, yeah. I would have thought, and then say that they've got to focus on the future and trying to uh, plan for next season plan for next season and rebuild the, you know, their, their approach because you know, it's dispiriting. And the problem that you have, and you'll know this more than anybody else, Danny, if you have a bad end to, to a season, yeah. 
sometimes you can have a real hangover if you don't get it get arrest that slide yeah. do you know what I mean yeah. and the next season could be it can still feel it around the club around the, the, the dressing room and, and, and sometimes that can then can carry it into the result well I think as well for him if I mean if it carries on like this because this is horrendous the last few weeks yeah he won't be in a job next season no I mean it, I mean you don't get beat five five and six at home with regularity and then enjoy it there's a couple of kids over on the far side that are trying to uh, rev up the atmosphere uh, and do a little bit of break dancing in the third row of the stand opposite us the cricket ground side of the pitch it was a cricket ground this you know back in the day England played cricket here here is uh, Kivior forward towards uh, Havertz Havertz to Trossard Trossard who's done brilliantly actually when uh, playing for Arsenal recently good in, player in he been a good yeah, signing for them really good signing and, and actually you know Mart oh, giving the ball away here though cheaply Cedric into Partey stretching and Asula is away he's speeding up towards the edge of the area trying to get a shot away he's hit it and it's so far high over the top of the crossbar, it goes into the cop. But that might well be their first real effort. He was direct, he was positive, he bobbled up as he hit it, no problem with that. Showed some athleticism. Give it away again here. Yep, Arsenal giving it straight to Harmer. Harmer trying to make something happen. He was at Coventry last year. He plays it back towards uh, Souza. Souza sends it wide out to Baldock. Baldock's ball into the box, dealt with by Gabriel. He heads it high into the air. It breaks for Jesus, who can escape here. And Erdegaard is to his right hand oh, side. He's missed, him. he's missed the pass and decided to leave it, but Havers is backing him up. He's got it now. Plays it back to Jesus. Left side of the area. Cuts him right foot. He bends it towards the far corner. Big save by Gerbic, who pulls out the right arm and steers it round the post. And it's out for a corner. You know what, maybe I'm being a bit harsh on Jesus, but I think the easiest pass was to Odegaard there, and he completely missed it. I don't know if it's just a bit of rustiness. I don't know whether it was just wrong decision, but it was at 2v1. They ended up creating the chance in the end to Jesus, who coming off that left and bent it. was a good save in the end. Well, I don't know what trust he was doing when he was going up for the header with Jesus, but he completely missed it. Ended up in a crumpled heap. And uh, off went Jesus, steaming through the middle. He actually made the wrong decision, as you say. And then... Fortunately for him, Havertz was doing such a good job in backing him up. Yeah, he, was. he was able to pinch the half clear ball and then set Jesus away again for a second time. He opened up his body, cut in on his right foot, bent the ball towards the far corner. Gerbic actually makes a good save. He's out for a corner. Trust he's had his treatment. He's back on his feet and ready to defend this set piece, which Arsenal are taking a little bit of time over. We've got seven and a half minutes still to play on Talk Sport. And. Uh, well, Manchester City's next two fixtures will hold great sway in the Premier League title race. They face Liverpool this weekend. And then after the international break, it is Arsenal. Arsenal may well be top by the time that that weekend comes around. Here's the corner in front of the Bramall Lane end. Uh, into the centre, it goes towards Kivio. Header away is by Willis Sula. It's won by Harmer on the edge of the area. Set back for Ben Osborne in the left fullback position. He'll attempt to clear here. And it goes up towards halfway. Challenge goes in from behind by uh, Saliba. It runs loose in the Sheffield United half. It's uh, picked up by Baldock. He sets it forward. And now a chance for Arblaster to get the ball out towards the right side. It's collected by Bogle. Moves up towards the edge of the penalty. It opens up for him. Oh. So he shoots, but he got it all wrong. He was coming in towards... The inside, and he should have really, if he was going to hit it, go with his left. He well, went he was to the outside to, of the yeah. right, yeah. but he didn't catch it right at all. He was trying to wrap the outside of his right foot around it to, to bring it back to near post, but he, so did, it, it, but he didn't. <laughs> he was trying to. Yeah, it was the right idea. I don't mind that when someone tries to do the right thing. Yeah. I'm a bit worried that you're uh, going to be a little bit uh, soft now. Uh, because uh, you're being kind, but I, I, I like I like this uh, generosity of spirit that yes, you inherited yes, recently. Occasionally, occasionally it comes out, doesn't it? I'll tell you one thing for sure. Yeah. I don't think Arsenal will be scoring five on the next game away from home and uh, breaking another record. No, I think you might be correct, but you never know. That would be a turn up for the book. It would be a brilliant clip that we've just acquired if that is the case. Oh, well, the ball's been backed by Gabriel towards uh, Raya. It sort of went in the vicinity of the goal, so that. Uh, engendered a, a quite a cheer from the Sheffield United fans but nothing more than that 
they recovered. They have got a little bit sloppier as the game has gone on, but that's because they've brought in players like Party and played for a while. Cedric, who hasn't featured very often, Jesus is coming back from injury, and Vieira. Ooh, but nice. Erdegaard certainly has Yellow got card. his uh, very best about him, and his body swerved away from uh, Bordock, and I, it's a free kick. I'm going backwards on my soft side. Okay. He's pulled him back deliberately to stop him breaking. Which, which in the laws of the game is... It's a yellow card. It is, because you're breaking Why a promising Why are you letting attack. him off? Because they're 6-0 down. Generosity of spirit. But that's not the job of a referee. Is it? No. Is that in your rule book? No. One you were wearing... When your pants being down, when your pants being You were listening, you were listening that, today, yeah. were you, to Simon's yeah. little barb? As I yeah. pointed out to him, and I'll point out to you, it's not a rule book, it's a, a book of the laws of the game. Okay. <laughs> down the left hand side. He, he, he painted a picture of me being quite the nerd, didn't he? He did, yeah. yeah. Well, it, it was a stranger picture for me at the time. <laughs> I like the fact that you got it in full colour. Uh, here is. Uh, Vieira over on the far side. Time ticking away now for Arsenal to try and chase the record. They are going to be the first team to win by such a margin again, three times in a row away from home in English league football history. Uh, but uh, they may not add to this scoreline, Danny. Would, will they be disappointed with that or will they be, be happy that six is enough? I, I wouldn't be disappointed personally. I think you've come away from home, played really well enhanced your goal you, you, they wouldn't have envisaged winning six here they wouldn't have envisaged this team capitulating like they did again they would have watched the Villa game of course maybe even further back but the reality is they would have expected a tougher task so to come away from here with a handsome win and not having to exert yourself they'd be delighted ball played down the right for Jesus again who's running behind Trusty got into the area tried to trick his way past another challenge uh, then the momentum sort of gone out of the attack before he finds Vieira who's on the edge of the area it's back to Kivior now on to Trossard Trossard who tries to scoop it into the box Trusty heads it into the air might run loose here Vieira goes up with Robinson Robinson sort of rather uh, a hodgepodge of an attempt to the clearance, but eventually gets it out of the box. Cedric goes down the right. He looks to take on Brooks. Gets the cross into the centre. Trusty away with a header again. Drops for Thomas Partey. And then on to uh, Havertz, edge of the area. Keeps it well. Back into Partey. Partey looks up. Flicks it over the top. Jesus is onside here. Just does a little cry turn into the penalty area. And another one as well. Being a little bit over elaborate. And then eventually the official on the far side lifts his flag up and says, actually, I did think it was offside initially. I think the other thing we didn't mention, and we, we're maybe assuming, is that, of course, Martinelli, we look like he hurt his ankle, but the substitution of Saka at half time. Well, we hope that that's not an injury. Yes, you might be right. Well, yeah, depends well, who you support, but yeah, generally, yeah, England fans would hope. I forgot, yes, your allegiance, yeah. No, not me, I'm saying no. you, you're assuming our listeners are all worried for Arsenal wingers. Well, I think they would be concerned for Saka because he's valuable to the England cause. I, I would be, like yourself, of course. Yes. Um, but we will investigate that with Mikel Arteta, who will hopefully join us live after the game. Yes, uh, got a thumbs up from Deck. Good, he's bought the live kit, just not the stacks tonight. Uh, here is... Uh, he's been away a while. I mean, he, he can't come yeah. straight back into it 100 miles an hour and uh, be exactly. perfect. Look at know. Partey, for Look example. Look at Partey, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Not that we're putting them in the same bracket, of course. Maybe Cedric. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's worked. Yeah, Cedric. <laughs> here's Jesus. Even back to Cedric's halfway. warming up. I mean, are the, are the Sheffield United fans going to be, when they finish this game, obviously it's been a, a rather tepid second half with very little action, are they going to be angry at the end of this game? Are they staying here to make sure that when the full-time whistle goes, they can boo their team with all their might? Or are they going to be pretty sanguine about the whole thing and look at it and go, well, Arsenal can do that to anyone, and they have. I, no, I think it'll be mixed. I think there'll be a lot of anger. I think there'll also be some just confusion and bemusement as to what they've been watching in recent weeks and why this team's capitulated so much. Ball clip forward by Saliba up towards Trossard, it's headed away by uh, Bogle, offside flag is up again, the next game's for uh, Sheffield United Bournemouth away, Manchester United away two big games for them before the international approach and that second game's not going to happen is it that Manchester United game because they, uh, Man United are in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup so they've got just one game between now and the international breakdown at Bournemouth then they come back to a match with Fulham, then uh, we've got live on Talk Sport their game at Anfield with Liverpool. 
on the Thursday of the week where we've got 10 live games for you at the beginning of April. At the Chelsea. moment, they don't look like they can win a game. They really don't. Well, the fourth official has just come out with his board. I wonder if he's just said to Mikel Arteta, do you need me to add any time on? And he said no. Anthony Taylor said no, no. Uh, here is uh, Jesus on the halfway line, sending it back. We've got 10 seconds of normal time. It's a 50-second defeat in the last 68 Premier League games, dating back to July 2020 for uh, Sheffield United. Oh, five minutes of added time. Arsenal can get uh, another goal in that time, that's for sure, if Trossard fancies it. Sends it back towards uh, Kivior. Kivior down the left. Trossard's got it into the centre. Havertz now takes it on. It's going to be a fourth away win in a row for Arsenal for the first time in a year. And what it means is, is that Arsenal can go top on Saturday if they beat Brentford ahead of Saturday's Titanic tussle with Liverpool and City. And if things go their way, the Gunners could be top from next Saturday, the 9th of March, right through to the first weekend in April without even having to kick a ball after that uh, Brentford match. They will be rested, and by the looks of it, they'll be ready oh. for what's to come. Partey's made a mistake in the middle of the park. He's given it straight to uh, Souza, who's fed Harmer. He's then tried to skew it out to Willis Sula. He's dispossessed by Saliba, and he will clear away. Back to Raya. They're screaming out the exits now, the... Uh, Sheffield United fans, I think they've seen their goals for the night, all six of them in the Arsenal favour. And we're here with Enterprise Rent-A-Car, whatever the mission, home or away, Enterprise helps over 120,000 people every day. Here is uh, Gabriel. And I mentioned the record about Arsenal becoming the first English league side to win three successive away games by five or more goals. Sheffield United are about to become the first ever English league team to lose three home games in all competitions, conceding five goals or more in each. Not a record you want, mate, that's for sure. Nope. But you know what the killer is as well? It's, it's the fact that it's home. Yeah. That's the thing that hurts. Yeah. Jesus trying to spin in behind Trusty. Gets away from him and it goes to, to uh, Gerbic, away to our left-hand side. I'm we'll trying to think away. of my uh, worst home defeat. Uh, I remember United coming and doing us in the FA Cup. I think that was four. Fulham. They had Tevez and Rooney up top and they were on fire. Yeah. Maybe five, even four or five. I'd have to check that. But that's probably the worst one at home. And how did you feel afterwards? I wanted to kill somebody. Yeah, I was absolutely fuming. Not just... Not with anybody in particular. Myself, everybody. The fact we'd... We, we've just been so outclassed. I mean, it, they are a wonderful duo to get outclassed by, and a couple of the goals I remember being phenomenal. I think the fact that Tevez meg me as well twice don't just sent me over the edge. Do you think that the Sheffield United players will come away from this thinking that they've been outclassed by a supreme side or that they haven't done themselves any favours? I think both, but I hope they're angry, and I hope they're really able to look themselves in the mirror rather than look for blaming, blaming, not blaming somebody else, because... The easy thing to do is always come off a pitch and go, it's not me, I'm just got, I'm in a team with poor players. Odegaard skipping the ball over the top, looking for the advancing Partey, who tries to emerge from a pack of red and white shirts, but couldn't get on the end of it. And Gerbic comes yeah. out, gobbles it up inside the box, and we'll clear it away. We play 94 minutes, we're going to play 95. It's Sheffield United nil, Arsenal 6. It's sort of almost gone to a hush, apart from those Arsenal fans away to our left who have been buoyant. And uh, a foul has gone against Harmer here. And the referee, uh, Sam Barrett, has uh, been the victim of complaints. Kivior looked as if uh, was pulling back uh, Harmer before uh, Asula was uh, fouled or fouled Gabriel, but the referee gave the freaking Arsenal's favour. It was 4-0. Well, I've got confirmation. Was it? Yeah, 4-0. It's not bad, is it? Your worst home defeat, 4-0. I did get done once in away game in, in my early days at Crew. I think it was about 17, 16, 17, and we'd got done 7 1 at Hull. Oh, how did that feel? Um, I can't remember it's that long ago. I honestly can't, but <laughs> I seem to remember thinking 
it's not my fault because I'm one of the best young players at the club and these are all old rubbish players and it's not on, that's not on me right okay like that was it no wonder you made it with that sort of you know, <laughs> you know self-belief <laughs> I'm joking <laughs> I actually thought I, I actually remember thinking this is a really different world I mean, what I'm used to playing. I've got to admit, watching this game, this is a really different world to anything I've seen yeah. in a very long time. Because, yeah. I mean, this is, you know, we're walking around here, just passing the ball around Arsenal, not really doing anything. You know, even from the first few minutes when they were up for it and popping the ball around at rapid speed, they were, they were humiliating uh, Sheffield United. As the ball goes wide towards the left, towards uh, Havertz, and that's the end of the game. Listen to the reaction. Well, the basement blades have been bashed up by an awesome Arsenal who have now scored 17 goals in their last three away games. They know it's going to be a stretch, but they are in this three-way title tussle and there may be a few unexpected pitfalls yet for the unsuspecting. This weekend, Liverpool went first. They won and stayed number one. City went second, they stayed second, just a point behind. And Arsenal went third, blips the, the boys from Bramall Lane with an absolute goal glut and stay third. Just a whisker off City, but boy, have they enhanced their goal difference. It's as it was until next week when the top two meet after Arsenal have had the chance to go top. And on this evidence... They surely will. What an epic battle we have unfolding for the right to be called the Premier League champions. Arsenal more than in that conversation. Sheffield United will only be thinking about their impending relegation, which is now almost certain. Sheffield United nil, Arsenal six. Well, some bookies have closed the book on Sheffield United going down in any wonder. After the results they've had and that performance, Sheffield United have played four games here this calendar year. They're the fourth highest scorers of Bramall Lane in 2024 behind Villa Brighton and now Arsenal, whose players go over to that packed away in the lower tier to our left and applaud those fans. And they must have loved every minute. They're being spoilt this season, those Gooners on the road. They must love travelling away watching their team banging goal after goal after goal the Sheffield United players are actually going around the three sides of their ground with the, that are meant to have their fans in there's not many left one or two have stayed behind a lot of them left early a lot of them have left before full time and right on the whistle so many more left as well but there's been gaping holes great swathes of seats empty in the stands among the home fans here at Bramall Lane. You could say, Danny Murphy, they put in a bit more of an effort in the second half. They lost the second half, but they saved a little bit of face second half. It's too late for me. Uh, I mean, it, it wasn't being behind at half-time. It was, it was the capitulation, the lack of physical output, the lack of... Nobody got near anybody. Nobody got the crowd going with a tackle or... Just, just... There was no collective spirit or togetherness that gave you any um, encouragement that they could do better next time it, this is three home games eh? I, I, I don't remember a team getting done three times at home by five maybe away from home yeah I'm sure there's, probably, there's records out there but this is worrying because although they've got no chance of staying up the last few games and, and it, it might not sound nice but it's, it's what I see is a group of players yes lacking quality but not playing for the manager no, I agree. And you asked the question midway through the second half, is this, you know, they, they've beaten the, the worst points tally, which was Derby, with 11 points in 2007-2008. They won one game, Derby. Sheffield United have already won three. But actually, I think they're playing worse right now in this spell in the season than any other Premier League team has ever played.